Okay. All right. Welcome to uh, the December 7th Joint School Committee meeting. I'd like to call to order the Concord Carlisle Regional School Committee meeting. And I'll call to order the Concord School Committee meeting. Start with Harry. Harry, welcome. Hello. Um, so I don't have too much to talk about this week. Um, it's a little bit of a dull period in between Thanksgiving break and winter break. Obviously, there's a little bit of tension around the Omicron variant that I've noticed. Um, people are a little bit more intense about like masking and staying distance and stuff like that. And then I would also say that just in general in the student population, there is a lot of anticipation for winter break. And I think a lot of people have a little bit of a hard time focusing on like their schoolwork and assignments during this time, which I think teachers have been aware of for the most part. I mean, at least all of my teachers have been making sure to give like a little bit of extra time and opportunities for extra help and stuff like that. Um, another thing last week was the start of the winter sports season, which is super exciting. Um, it adds a little bit of excitement to a time that's otherwise kind of dull. And even if you're not playing a winter sport, it's like super fun to be able to go and watch games and stuff like that. And I know that Darcy talked to you guys a little bit about like the sustainability report that we put together last week. And if you have any other questions, obviously reach out to us. We can find the information for you. And yeah, like I said earlier, there's not really too much going on right now, but we'll be sure to update you if anything changes. Well, that's great. Thank you, Harry. Harry. And the report was great last week. Thank you for working on that with her. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, public comment. For a member of the public and would like to make a comment, please use the raise hand feature in the participants tab. And no raised hands. Uh, go on to correspondence. Yes. I think. In the past week, no. Um, no, I don't okay. think so. No. No. <laughs> All right. Airs and liaisons reports. Let's go around the room. Tracy. Okay. So we had a DEI meeting. Uh, I'm going back to when we had our meeting. It was a week ago, I believe. And we have our January meeting scheduled. And we what we do need to talk about, though, is... After I did my MASC training, we really should have the school committee in its entirety as part of the DEI mm -hmm. subcommittee, and that way we can all participate. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, well, other members that might come to a meeting will have to be silent. So our quorum would still be Court and Sarah and I. Mm -hmm. but maybe at our next meeting, if we could vote to um, make it a committee of the mm -hmm. entirety of the school committee. Yep. That makes sense. Um, and so we have a January meeting. So we'll again be doing some readings as we did last time. We'll have some discussion. And Andrew's going to keep us updated on the equity survey. We are going to complete the equity survey as a school committee. We just don't have timing on that yet, but you will be getting that either from me or from Andrew. And then um, he is scheduling our subcommittee groups, but that will again have to be careful about who sits on each one. And that's it. Um, I don't have anything to report for the region, um, except to note that the CPAC has their monthly meeting this coming Monday, the 13th, at their usual time, which is 7 p.m. The Public Access Advisory Committee, that's the town cable television committee met last week, uh, met with a representative from Comcast as we do each year to take a look at uh, Comcast subscriptions, revenue, revenue flows to the town and to the station at the high school. Uh, Concord is just embarking on negotiations for its 2024 contract with, or contract renewal, I should say, with Comcast. Carlisle uh, has negotiations underway right now. I, I imagine they're bring, coming to a close very soon. I would guess. Uh, and then on a very separate matter, uh, Dr. Hunter and I have been in touch with Sue Curtin of the Nanai Connection, 
and uh, more recently with uh, Matt Lucy and Kate James at the Willard. And we've got a meeting tomorrow to try to put together plans whereby Concord schools can begin again some outreach with Nanai. I'll have more on that soon. Okay. Yeah. And I'll just, I forgot to let you know, but the Concord School Committee met with the select board last night regarding the capital plan. And we, uh, both select board and Concord School Committee, uh, voted to approve the current um, long term capital plan. And uh, also, there was discussion about the the session plan for the town manager, which will be continued on the 13th. Um, yeah, COVID updates. Great. Hunter. Let me screen share. <clears throat> so I don't have too much. It's been a, only a week. So you can see uh, last week's cases. We had, I believe it was eight across the schools, fairly spread out. So no worries that it was um, related to school. Um, we've had one so far this week. Our total for the year is 71. Uh, vaccination rates, we're eager to start collecting the elementary and sixth grade ones, which will happen probably somewhat before the end of December and then certainly in January. Last week's testing numbers, we remain very steady um, within 10, 10 kids generally um, at really outstanding participation at the elementary schools and um, Sanborn's up quite a bit too. So that was good to see. That was the one place that grew last week. Um, and then I'm including a little more data every time. So this is, these are our test and stay numbers from last week a little more spread out than the week before um, since Thoreau settled down, which was good to see. And then um, <coughs> briefly mentioned what's happening when someone has symptoms. They are doing what has always been the case, which is go out and get a test on their own and stay home until they're well. Um, so we had 99 symptomatic students across all the schools last week, which <coughs> um, says there's other things out there besides COVID, <laughs> which you know, we should remember. Uh, Destiny only put out a brief update, not even an update, clarification um, related to test and stay and nuances of that. Um, if kids have just been vaccinated, what's the impact of whether they need to be tested and a little bit of protocol there. And then next week is our uh, second round of second shots at the high school. So it should be in really good standing after that. It's been well, well, well attended and great participation. So pretty stable from last week, which is good news with all the different things going on and the high case counts in the state. So, mm -hmm. okay. That's tonight. Okay. We were going to have a communication go out in regard to boosters, if I'm correct. Um, just as a, by way of a reminder or an encouragement. Yes. Yes. I, Thank you for the reminder. Okay. Thank you. And there are no questions about. Uh... So, upon being fully vaccinated, all those elementary students who choose or who have been vaccinated will essentially roll out of test and stay the same way. So, we'll have a lot more calm and peace. Yeah, the, the demand case. on test and stay is going to drop dramatically, dramatically. once case six is fully vaccinated. Yeah. So that's something we're looking forward to because we'll be able to keep kids in school without the the effort and you know work that it is to run all those antigen tests. And then my next question is: I, Did I dream a discussion that we had that was potentially going to be uh, that we were going to potentially be able to? give antigen tests to symptomatic vaccinated kids so that they could come to school and not have to procure a test on their own? Yeah. So I can tell are you, we, doing we, that? we started researching that we are not doing that right okay. now. We could not find a school that was doing it. Yeah. Because that means you've got symptomatic kids in class. Um, so we slowed down. And then at the same point, the case numbers started to spike and we just 
mm-hmm. held off. So that could be something we revisit. Um, it seems yeah. to be. I just look at those pretty on case numbers. Schools have have opted yeah. into that. And just looking at the case numbers at Sanborn and um, CCHS, they're just so they're, non-existent. They're amazing, and it's so yeah. encouraging to see the vaccines are clearly having an impact. Yeah. So maybe down the road we can come back to it. Yeah, we we did slow down. We to find a school that was doing it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So thanks for asking. And can I just ask, fully vaccinated adults? So that would mean our students that are eighteen and up, and our staff. Does is fully vaccinated the two shots, or is fully mm-hmm. vaccinated? So the booster is optional right now. The booster is optional. Okay. Okay. Good clarification. Yep. Encouraged. Right, mm-hmm. but obviously. <laughs> okay. All right. Great. Good. Great. So I have Russ Hughes uh, on the Zoom. I don't know if we can promote him or and uh, and Ian Rames are here. Um, but we um, we have some information regarding the backo, uh, regarding the amenities building, as well as. Um, the um, repaving and lighting of the access road. Where would you like to start? Why don't you go through them one at a time and then they can make informed. Perfect. Rusty, can you hear me? There he is. Yeah. Welcome, Russ. Thank you for joining us. There he is. Excellent. <laughs> He's back on mute. So. Um, so Russ had a conversation with the town regarding the repaving, and he, I think, has answers to all of our questions regarding uh, can we jump on uh, their project, um, can we break it up, uh, what kind of timeline we need to be on, um, uh, et cetera. Uh, Russ, do you want to tell them what you know? Yeah, so I talked with the DPW director, and they're all on board with us, Um, just partnering with them. And for the high school, the two entranceways and the roadway in front of the BD Center. Um, Also, as Jared just mentioned, some lighting and uh, some sidewalks work and we can combine it with their project uh through the summer for to get some economies at scale there and um so it's you know we'll have to do some preliminary engineering work which we already done uh we have some of it so it may be something we could get the town engineers to help us with as well um but i guess it goes out i don't know all the how the process works but we just have to be ready probably around springtime um for when it goes to a town vote or i'm not familiar with that process so yeah that's part of what they have to talk about here is what what that process is going to be and if we're doing it now so did, it, did they indicate any idea of the cost savings if we're within working with them? And it may be too early. I understand that. Uh, yeah, I, I think if I recall when we met with uh, the, the last director, it was like a 20 percent uh, savings. It, it's significant. Um, so I, I remember that uh, number. You too. Yeah. said. Okay. Russ, can you speak to uh, how the potential lighting and the paving uh, are connected and to the extent they are, what that does to our timetable for a a spring readiness for paving? When you say spring, do you mean fiscal year 23 or... Well, I don't think we have uh, done more than uh, plug, plug this into uh, fiscal 23, so it'd be coming up pretty soon, right? As it right. right now. But uh, if paving is uh, has to be coordinated with lighting, and 
lighting requires uh, more, more attention, more engineering, more pricing. Uh, when are we going to get going on that? What does that timetable look like? And well, let's start with a simple question. To what extent are they connected? To what extent? They, they, they would be engineered at the same time. And I, I would say both projects would be done over the summer when school's not in session. So, because you'd have to, you know, run all the infrastructure for the lighting first and then do the paving right after. So, right. Okay. Now, we were hoping the engineering had been done. We're hearing now that we need to do more engineering. So this is news as of tonight. It, it, may, have, it may have been. So I'm not, I haven't really, I've seen some preliminary plans. I haven't really gotten in, in depth into it yet. So if I can just interrupt you, Russ, here. Yeah, we did, uh, I b believe when Rich was here at the time, um, I don't know, the gentleman's name is escaping me. They did do some pre uh, preliminary engineering Extensive. Work. Yeah. Yeah. They were here for a week yeah. doing engineering. And I can, I can so we can pull, pull that those out. and be sure they're... Yeah, it was before my time, the, court. The intent was for them to be complete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, uh, uh, the most recent time we talked about it here, we were of a mind it was yes. effectively yes. complete. So Correct. to the extent it's not, I think we need to... Yeah, I don't believe it isn't complete. We'll double check, okay. but our understanding was that it was. Okay. And then I thought this was uh, going to be done the same time as we were talking about doing a parking lot up there. Yeah, um, that's not correct. Right. <laughs> so I'm not mm. promoting a parking lot. <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, that was the only time I was really part of the conversation. And, right. you know, I haven't. Yeah, it, it didn't pass a town meeting. So it went okay. in high hiatus. And here we are, with the road discussion again. Um, did we talk at all about any partial, can we do this in segments rather than all at once? I'm sure uh, it's I would, not uh, as costly. You, you could, but I, I would recommend to do it all at once. Um, it's, or, yeah, I, I would recommend doing it all at once. Um, if, if we wanted to, like I said, partner with the town. And I do think, though, that they, I think that is an option. It might cost more. And I know every year that they do have paving yeah. pro projects. So we could probably jump on it if, if the committee so chooses to, to break it up. It might not be as uh, cost effective to do that. But I think that is an option, again, because they do it every year. I'm just so, thinking about the lighting, too, though. I don't know if you're going to be tearing up the road to do all the lighting. You may have to do it all at once. But yep, yep, good. Let's imagine we wanted the economy and the efficiency of doing it all at once. Yeah. Let's imagine then that we follow the town's timetable for paving to bundle our project into a larger project. That would mean, if I understand it correctly, that uh, the town's paving schedule that would hit our that driveway effectively determines our planning timetable for the lighting and the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to get involved in operational matters to the extent of be, you know, beyond just understanding them. Uh, what's our next move um, in terms of the work necessary for sidewalk and lighting data? Aren't they always paving something, though? Or is that no. not true? No, it's seasonal. And, uh, no, I know. But I mean, every spring season, they would sure. be paving something. It just pulled back a lot because of COVID. You're right, but oh, that's where their 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 budget's what five million or something, and it's usually two. But there's definitely been an aggressive paving schedule yeah. with the town right. more recently because they were behind, and now they're this year, they're, this year, yeah, yeah. three, yep. Yeah. And the things is, you have to get ahead of the scheduling because they book up really fast. Right. Um, so that would be something that I think we would have to get it all scheduled at least scheduled before it even approves, just so that they can get it on their schedule mm -hmm. um, and I could be wrong and Ian please um, correct me that the money if town meeting does so approve this in both towns that money becomes available then not necessarily on July 1st that we get it correct
Okay. Yeah. That's assuming you're moving this forward as Warren articles in both Correct. towns, which mm -hmm. I don't think you've decided yet. No, not quite. <laughs> And we, still need to, we still need to understand the how long does it take and what are the impacts to our neighbor. All right. Did they rest? Did they give you a, a sense as how long the project would take? And can you use the road? Uh, you know, usually if they do a neighborhood, they do half the street at a time. Can you actually use the access way? Yeah, I mean, it, we're fortunate we have two entrance ways. So mm -hmm. I, I would envision it, you know, they would shut down one entrance way, do that, and, you know, open that up and then do the other entrance way after. They have to, they have to mill it, which means it's still drivable. The whole, you know, you've been right. through, you've been through. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Yeah. What's the next? next? To the next thing. Um, so the campus tractor trailer. So we, we had a nice, good conversation about that. Um, this would save us anywhere from twenty to 25000 per year. It would, save on, um, it would save in contract services, not only um, spreading, you know, bark mulch and plowing. Um, it would also potentially save in, in overtime. Um, one of the tractors that we currently have uh, is always in the shop at the Mechanics Bay up, uh, up at Knox Trail, and that's sort of on its, its last couple years. Now, that is, not that is not the same size as the one that we are recommending, um, so, but that, will, that probably will need to be replaced, that smaller one, in the next couple years. Um, we're going to keep trying to keep it going, uh, but that is something that might be in the general fund budget. Um, so, like I said, it could be anywhere from a twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars savings each year, a payback between five and seven years. The other thing is that we, while it would be nice to have a shed or a hut, it is not necessarily. It does not need that. Anything I missed there, Russ? No, I think you pretty much covered it. You know, I, I think the smaller tractor, what we have, it's it's more for like uh, they pull a lawnmower with it, and it's more for smaller jobs. Um, it's not really the best for snow removal. This would not replace the need for contracted plow services, too. Mm -hmm. Though no. this would it would yeah. reduce it, but it wouldn't. Yeah, be, uh, depends on the snow. <laughs> yeah. And where do you store it? If it doesn't need a shed or a hut, where do you store it? It would be at the high school. Okay. Uh, we, we wouldn't be using it for any other schools but the high school. High school, okay. No, yeah, the 125 is just the tractor. It's not, that's excluding that. Yeah. Right. Okay. And, uh, so that 125, I think it's, it's I, I think that's, that is a, a good cost for that. Do, do you think that... Um, Enough? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Did that number once include the, the shed for it as well? Did not, no. So it was another number? I think so. Do you have any idea what a, because we, uh, we just started a little bit talking about the shed um, when we had introduced this. Um, we never necessarily thought it needed it. What do you think a storage shed would cost? Could that be something that could be funded through the general fund for $10,000 or something like that? I think it would be a lot more than that, Jared. Okay. I'm not advocating so, it. I just okay. know we looked at a number that did include a shed because um, we discussed it as uh, two items, one number. Um, and if we, if we are in earnest about that conversation, we're going to look at uh, impermeable surface also. Can you just clarify that? Yeah, I, I, so I, I think I misspoke that this 125 did not include um, that the, the storage okay. shed. And you would chart those uh, projected savings against uh, reductions in contracted services for, for one grounds, um, is this one plowing, and, and maybe even maintenance over time. So number of sources you'd have to look at. Yeah. Okay. But you only have got a couple of vendors for this kind of stuff. 
We do. We have a great plow vendor that we got over the last two years, and then we use the same for grounds pretty much. Um, That's correct. Yeah. True Green? No personnel implications to put somebody on a bigger machine? Uh, no. Would they require us? We, so the, a few of the guys have some special licenses. Would this require They do, us and, and, and they have the licenses. We have two guys that have them. And we are already paying a differential for mm -hmm. that yep. already. Okay. Yep. Got it. Thank you. Great. Um, so next, and I'll have Russ speak on this, uh, the amenities start with the design, well, the amenities building, and it's all plumbing code. Yep. So I, I forwarded, Jared, the documentation. I don't know if you shared it. I just with the got it. Committee, what I found. They don't have it, Russ. So. Okay. So we have a... Um, a waiver that can be submitted to the state plumbing board so we can reduce the number of uh, toilet fixtures in the restrooms. That, that work has been done. We just need to submit it. Um, I also found uh, just a sketch of what the building would look like. It would be located down in front of the tenants' courts in between the bleaches. So I don't know if, uh, if you have that, Jared. Can you screen share that? I can. But what would the waiver reduce us to how many bathrooms? Um, I don't have it in front of me, sorry. Well, I think, uh, I think but it's, 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 it goes from 44 to right, 22, was, uh, give or take. Yeah. And our... Our hesitation in even considering submitting it is it presumes that we would then okay. get locked in at 22 and we're completely unsatisfied with that solution. So I don't think we want to uh, uh, trigger a lot of events with, yeah. with any application without the... We, did, we all did some different research. I can't find you a workaround right now. It's plumbing code. Mm -hmm. So that requires the plumbing and I know you were hoping for more creative options that didn't include plumbed toilets, et cetera, but it's a plumbing code that's holding you accountable at the moment. So I saw, I did find plenty of other school districts having the exact same conversation and finally <laughs> rolled it into the building project or whatever with the struggle that you're having of how much it costs to build that kind of facility. Um, so I don't think we have a better option at the moment. Go ahead, Alex. Is, so is the town sort of currently being kind, mm -hmm. sort of granting us this extension? And my question is, one day might their kindness run out and they come knocking and then we're compelled to do this in a sort of swifter timeline or in, in according yeah. to their timeline? They know that it's town money that has to pay for this. It's not like there's a private school oh, no, no, still, I understand I still that, would like to explore having one of those towable bathrooms I don't quite understand why well I, I'd be happy to go to uh, an outfit like Clivis New England or one of these folks that do the the composting toilets we talked about this a week ago to see where where they have bumped into this because vendors uh, have a keen interest in knowing how to navigate this stuff because this is mm -hmm. their bread and butter um, I just don't think a 22 bathroom facility is going to fit in there, honestly. I mean, it's not that big a space. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I just don't understand how the footprint would fit. Because I get it, but isn't that question? I mean, unless we have a two story bathroom facility. <laughs> right. So 22 have bathrooms to like, is really 11 and 11. You know, Jared, I think one of those layouts there, it does show where it would fit. Um, if you. Oh, I think you scrolled past it. Yep, Jared. I think I did. Oh. It's it's an overview. Well, okay, so there's the one showing the restrooms. Oh, that also has a lot of... And there it is showing where it would fit. Those are the bleaches, the football field, tennis courts. That was always where it was needed to go. Yeah. So the men's room, you can get away with the urinals. So that solves your 11. 
right? But it does fit. So that so that drawing does fit in the space. Just right? barely. <laughs> but it's, it, it fits, it. right? Yeah. But people have to navigate around it. I mean, you're barely going to be able to get wheelchairs right. by it, unfortunately. You know what I'm saying? Well, but there. I mean, I would assume that you got to go with ADA code and everything like that. So you would be able to get wheelchairs around it. They couldn't put it. We're there. certainly going to have to put up better lacrosse right. nets because. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's where people stand is avoid being hit by balls. I'm just, I think it has to have a lot more thought and it's very expensive on top of that, right? It's a, over a million dollars to build a bathroom. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Right, right. But, but, but it's just worth need a bathroom with ourselves. You know, like if, if, if we're right, the but, town and they're the town, I know, but we're at odds. Tonight, let's decide what we're going to do. We only have to decide on 23. We don't have to vote a long term. Oh, capital, sure, right? great. Right? Yeah. And maybe... I think we... You have some homework to do on the first item, a tiny bit on the second item, and uh, more on more on this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this one it shows a lot of. I mean, there's a lot of space for for storage. Derek, right. can you scroll down to the <laughs> next page just to see what the what all of the? I guess so it's. I mean, so I guess another question is like, is all that storage? Is there demand for that? There is. We're renting pods right now. If you really want the, the answer, mm -hmm. whether that's the that's the answer you want to. But we could put there. some storage up on the upper field. We've, we've got parking a lot of lot. rentals out there right now. Yeah. Okay. yeah, right. Like football in particular is is in a pod up by the school, and across. Not right, yeah. and not down by actually where they're playing. Okay. So, but we're going to have to make some yeah. kinds of decisions. Right. Well, I mean, compromises. You know, we're not going to get everything we want. <laughs> So I think you're right. You don't have to make decisions tonight. We'll get this plan to you to take a look at more carefully. We also need to vet the impervious surface bylaw and make sure we haven't exceeded that. If if you would like us to look at that. Well, I thought that was a problem with the shed. It is, yes. So why would it's it be the problem, problem with this? All along. <laughs> there, there is impervious <laughs> surface there already. So it's just a matter of whether you're staying within what's already there. If you go over that, you're yep. going to definitely have a problem. <laughs> So well, thankfully, you might be compelled to do something, but not able to do something. You're right, exactly. Something like well, you could get a codes and town bylaws colliding with each other. You can't get a waiver on the, the <laughs> yeah, the planning the, the, the zoning bylaw. The zoning board can give us a waiver <clears throat> if we present a good case. So to your point, I don't think it's. I don't think it's part of your FY23 conversation, which is the timely piece of the discussion. Right. So assuming that we could, I think we should stick with the original number for the lighting and paving until we have somebody tell us that we can reduce the number from the town, right? No, yes. Unless you're sure of the 20%, they should hold that number. I would hold the current number that we have in there and we'll try and get something before next Tuesday. I, so I don't think we need something before next Tuesday. We need something before we submit our warrant articles, Correct. you know, closer to that. So I would want people to take the the appropriate amount of time to be sure they're confident in the number, right? Instead of we're not rushing. Yeah. There's if no if we decide rush. and we can always lower the amount. We've done that many, many efforts um, going up to town meetings. So you got all through January to figure out what if and what warrant you're going to put forward. All right, what was the next one? Great. What's my agenda? So next is the turf field. And this is the um, estimated replacement cost and disposal of. And is this when um, it needs to be replaced by, like, what is the life of the turf field? So like? I've heard actually a few different things. I've heard 10 to 12, and actually I just read recently 14 to 16 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I am, I, I did have a conversation with Aaron. Uh, I am meeting with him again tomorrow, which is too late to bring you that news. But um, in, in, I think, I, I think it's more in the 10 to 14 years. Um, so that would put us right now in 26 at 12. 
Good. Is it, is it use or ultra, ultraviolet that uh, does does the most degradation? Do we know? I don't. I don't. It's a little. Hmm? Uh, it gets tears. Yeah. So it's use. Yeah. All right. We'll watch the Doug White field and see when they replace right. that. Yeah. Because they, I think it, they're coming up to at least 10. I know they got a, there was a flaw, so they got a new field for free. After like three years, it had lead in it. Yes. So you're right. We can certainly continue discussions on what they're going to do there to help us, help inform us. They have a fund that all the use, so yes. it's pretty built up. I think they've got more than enough. <clears throat> use is, is essentially equivalent. I would say that use is higher. Okay. More, more people at least, you know, like there's adult, there's people on it. Till nine at night sometimes, I adult I, soccer. Yeah, I agree with that, yeah. It's the aperture fields, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But not during the day. I don't know. Mm. I mean, PE uses it right during the day, but not yeah. heavily. Yeah. Yes, and our athletic teams. It might even out if yep. you mapped it out. Anything else on that? Okay. So this is on for a vote tonight, if mm -hmm. you're ready to mm -hmm. vote. And obviously, you can amend your plan at any point. This would just give you a, an actual plan that you've approved for the moment. Mm -hmm. well, I think we should vote FY23 so we can then have our staff move forward to working with the town so they know we're pretty serious about that because I don't think we should go forward with that and then change our mind after people put in work at relatively low cost to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know when you want to have the pros and cons of Warren articles going to both communities, is what timing you want to have on that discussion. Just well, again, I think we should commit to something, especially if we're going to ask the town to work with us. I don't think we I should. I agree, because we okay. kind of, I mean, we did that last time and then it failed at town meeting. That's nobody's, that is what it is. Yeah. But I think you're right have them put in more time and then we don't move it makes sense i guess i'll just story tell a little because we did bring this forward and it had the parking attached so it is a very different ball game but mm -hmm. um you know you really have to get word out and get people in the room and help the users who are going to benefit understand the well that's what i'm saying i want to be sh sticker shock to this project yeah because that's why we'd like to get it down and of then of course less you know get a maybe close to a, that million dollar number or under and makes it a little more palatable. Yeah. And I especially felt it in Carlisle, there's a different revenue stream there than mm -hmm. in Concord and it, it's a big impact on them. So yep. I was thoughtful of that. Well, and I think that if, if you, I mean, it's a little bit different story now with the town than it was when it got voted down. You know, mm -hmm. if we can say we're working with the town and it's gonna be a 20% um, savings because we're working with the town, I mean, that is helpful. Right. And the taxpayer. They, you know, Carlisle does also benefit from the BD Center and it mm -hmm. packs the BD Center. Yep. And, you know, I, th I think it won't be an impossible um, sell. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, once I think we all agree getting the price down would be much better. Um, I mean, there's no doubt that this work needs to be done. And I feel like it's been on hold for so long. Yep. And I, I do feel like there's an urgency to moving this forward. Mm -hmm. I mean, you always run the risk of something getting voted down at town meeting. But, you know, to me, this project is very different than the middle school building. They're, they're two different projects. And we have to look at we need to get this. Oh, yes. Done, right. <laughs> and when it, when it included the parking space, it was two million. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's that. And there was a lot of discussion at that town meeting that people didn't want the additional parking because they yeah, felt no, this stuff, was you know, it was really, it was the parking issue was really, yes. people felt like kids should be biking to school and they actually are biking to school now. <laughs> Things have kind of changed a little bit. We do need a road. Into we that. need a new road. We do. Right. All right. Well, we'll vote later then, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, superintendent's recommended budget. Thank you, Russ. Thanks, Russ. Thanks, Russ. Thank you. Bye. So I'll introduce what Jared's going to pull up and then go through with you. Um, 
Tonight we're bringing you the regional recommended budget. Um, overall, I think the high school budget's a quite level service budget for sure, um, with uh, one or two exceptions. Um, Jared will show you some of the ways as well that there's a complicated piece that I want to be sure you know about right from the beginning. The 300,000 you put into E&D that then was used to offset FY22 is a factor in how, and it doesn't have to be a huge part of your discussion tonight, but it will be when you get to the FinCom slides. Um, the guideline number being used in Concord reflects the additional E&D revenue. So that is somewhere have to be part of your discussion of what you want that E&D contribution to be. Our recommendation is the 300,000, not the 600, the 300 we, we believe is best seen as a one-time event because of the surplus last year. We worked really hard to bring you from $680,000 of E&D revenue my first five years ago, knowing that's not sustainable because you're not going to replenish E&D at that rate. And that was part of our Moody's issues and everything else was that we were draining, draining that too fast. We've now built up E&D and don't want to get back into any of those habits or patterns of how we got there before. So um, when we get to the FinCom slides, Jared's done a lot of work to be able to show you both versions of numbers comparatively with the finance committee's numbers right now. This slideshow is all about what we're proposing for the high school budget, leaving, leaving guidelines off to the side, um, just so you can hear more of what's, what's in the budget. Again, level service with some attention on special education and our programmatic needs to continue intensive programs. Um, I'll foreshadow there's an increase of out-of-district monies related to that. It's not the only reason that number went up, but it is a piece of why it went up because we didn't have a place for those kids. Um, and so there, there's a fiscal need driving it as well as we want these kids in, in district. So I'll let you take it from there. And this is conversational. You want to... Yep. Go through the whole presentation yeah, so first, I'd, though, I'd right? I'd like to go through because I think a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be presenting on both the region and CPS in a way is redundant. So I might not answer a question in one slide because there might be another slide that has that same information. Um, so it, it, unless you really need to interrupt me, if I could just go through it, I think I, I, I should be able to answer most, if I won't say all, a lot of the questions. Um, great. And feel free to interrupt me at any time. If I, can. I will. Great. So the FY23 budget timeline right now, as you know, we are giving the first superintendent's recommended budget. The committee has until uh, around January 28th, they actually have into that week in February to vote the budget. The town is asking uh, they actually are asking us the week before the 28th, like the, that Friday. Uh, I did talk to them last week and they said, well, you really have until February. So our target, um, uh, and the, it has been the target uh, really in all of our timelines to uh, have the budget voted would be no later than uh, January 28th. I did call Carlisle. Uh, they did not have, um, they didn't have an answer yet for me when the, when the warrants are due as well as the date for town meeting. So we are scheduled also to have our public hearing on January 11th. Um, so that's an important date as well, because we get to put an ad in the newspaper. I think we already did, uh, just to make sure that we're not doing that last minute. Um, and then uh, it's very important actually for you to know, especially at the region, when the governor's budget comes out. So the initial governor's com budget comes out on the fourth Wednesday of uh, January. So that is January 26th. That will be the initial revenue projections and that's gonna impact the revenue slide that I'll show you in a bit. And that one, sorry, Jared, because last year that was- Pushed, yeah. Many, nine months mm -hmm. later, something like that? Right? Yes. Uh, but it is, it is anticipated to be- It is right now, yeah. 
So the recommended budget for FY23 is $36,644,994. This is an overall line item general fund budget increase of 2.48% over FY22's budget. So the 1000 function uh, includes all salaries and expenditures for administration, IT, HR, and other central office-based staff. Salaries for support staff were the only budget driver in this function due to an increase in 0.4 in HR and 0.4 in accounts payable. The need for these positions became very evident during the pandemic, and both are split with the CPS side. Overall, support salaries increased $68,346, or 0.8 FTEs. For something to be considered a budget driver in this section, uh, the expense type category must increase by 50,000 or more. A cost saving is the same thing, except a decrease of 50,000 or more. In this budget, I have 43 expense categories, and uh, of those, 15 of them are salary expense categories. The 2000 function includes salaries for teachers, assistants, and tutors, the principals and assistant principals, our substitute costs. School curriculum costs, school supplies and materials, uh, special education contract services, as well as equipment. Salaries for teachers are the uh, largest uh, budget driver in this function. They represent an increase of $510,874. There are some smaller increases in supplies and materials and professional development, but they do not constitute as a budget driver. The 2000 function does have some cost savings in it. Our contract services have decreased $111,423, uh, mainly due to special education. Uh, last year was the end of a three-year computer lease that is no longer needed, and we're right now realizing that savings, and that is $111,000. Next is the 3000 series or function, which includes our transportation expenses, nurses, athletics, and student activities. This function is decreasing 5.84%, mainly due to a decrease in our, space, uh, our case collaborative transportation costs. Driver salaries are increasing a total of $53,687 based on the FY22 budgeted amount. Uh, it's important to point out that driver, driver hours can be a bit fluid uh, due to some route changes uh, and the need for some added times. The 4,000 function, that includes all of our maintenance costs. Um, there is only a small overall increase of 0.34%, and there were no drivers in this section. Fixed charges include banking services, the audit contract, sick leave and retirement incentives, insurance, other post-employment benefits, as well as our retirement uh, assessment. Overall, the increase is 0.36%, but there are actually a few drivers and cost savings that offset each other. The insurance projections are up $68,323, uh, which includes a budgeted increase of $90,000 for our active employees, uh, but a $37,000 decrease to our uh, retiree medical insurance. Also, the retirement uh, assessment is down $36,924 from the FY22 budgeted amount. Uh, fixed assets include equipment um, in our vehicle and bus uh, replacements. Uh, the region's vehicle replacement line is increasing $53,311 uh, due to two new buses in this year's budget. Debt is continuing to decrease. And lastly, special education uh, lines are increasing $452,577. And we will speak about that on a later slide. So next is the budget drivers. So this is just another way to show what I just talked about in the 1000 series chart. Um, so I've identified $1,298,653 in budget drivers made up of seven expense categories. The first, as I said before, is uh, teacher salaries. Overall teacher salaries uh, increased 1.25 FTEs. And again, I will speak about that on a, uh, on a later slide. 
Special education tuition has increased 452,000. Uh, right now, we have three more tuitions in FY23 than we had in FY22. The addition of students coming in from eighth grade versus the students who are aging out, out also contributed to the increase. Support staff salaries increased 4.57%, uh, uh, again, mostly due to the 0.8 increase uh, in HR and accounts payable. Uh, insurance, uh, as I said, is also a budget driver. Salaries for assistants and tutors are increasing 6.02% due to an additional tutor, FTE, in this year's budget. Also, the tutor's contract is up at the end of this fiscal year, and we will be uh, negotiating with them sometime this early spring. And uh, again, lastly, uh, driver salaries as well as the uh, bus lines are uh, are also identified as budget drivers. So again, budget drivers or cost savings or anything in an expense category over 50,000, and I identified almost 1.3 million in budget drivers. This year, we've identified uh, four cost categories that had some cost savings. Uh, I've identified $554,768. Uh, contract transportation is down $237,819 uh, $237, um, due to the case formula, which is based on ridership from two years prior. Uh, again, contract services are mostly down, um, and they're down $121,229 overall. Uh, and this is mainly due to instructional special education contracted services that are in the district-wide location. Uh, again, the three-year computer lease that is up in FY22 is also a cost saving. And lastly, debt is decreasing. The budget has a total of 226.65 FTEs, which is 2.95 FTEs more than the FY22 budget. Salaries accounted for a total increase of $799,379 in this budget. This includes every employee but our food service um, staff who are paid out of the food service revolving account. We also have some offsets in the uh, in some of our grants, but we include their FTEs in this number. Um, our largest salary category, again, is the teachers. This category includes salaries and longevity payments. The budget includes an additional 1.25 FTE increase in this category. The main increase is the addition of a reading specialist, and half of this salary is being paid in the general fund, and half is being paid out of ESSER 3, and we have a slide on that. Then there are some small moving parts in other departments due to scheduling that cause just the additional 0.25 increase in teachers. Uh, I spoke about the, sport, the support staff and the tutor changes uh, earlier, uh, but there's a decrease of 0.1 FTE in the maintenance custodial um, expense category. We reallocated 0.1 FTE in maintenance to CPS, which just increased the FTE amount at CPS. So overall, this is a wash and just a budget really fixed based on where this person is spending their time. Did you want to mention the language-based special education position as well? That's the other addition oh. plus to the reading specialist. So that's the other request that's upping the FTE count is to create a language-based special education classroom. Sorry about that, yep. And with the previous one, there was a funding split, Lori? The reading specialist we are funding, proposing a split. Language-based is? Language-based would be fully in the operating budget. Thank you. You're welcome. So we charge approximately um, $431,297 in salaries to our grants and revolving accounts at the region. 
excluding the food service grant, which again is, uh, I'm sorry, food service revolving account, which is 100% self-funded. Uh, we're expecting right now about $462,000 in our MECO grant in FY22. Um, that allocation is actually not even finalized yet. And the FY23 application is due on Thursday. And at this time, we're expecting a level fund of $462,000. Most of this grant is spent on staff salaries, driver salaries, and fuel costs. Um, we also spend a small um, portion on supplies and materials and prof professional development. For the FY22 um, grant, um, as well as the FY23 grant, uh, you can see the allocations that we put in for the salaries, which does include um, the DEI director, uh, 0.5 teachers, the MECO director, 0.6, 1.5 MECO support staff, and 2.38 driver salaries. One of the line item budgets I had in the notes, um, DEI director in the MECO grant, I believe it was a CPS. So, this, uh, so it, it should have been in both, uh, just having a note there for you all. I know that might have been confusing. Um, Lastly, uh, we charge 50,000 of our campus uh, monitor salaries to the parking lot revolving account. Special education tuitions, uh, FY23's budget includes um, $3,046,720 uh, in out of district placements. Our circuit breaker projection in IDE grant offsets is actually projected to come in right now just over $91,000 more in FY23. So that offsets the tuitions a bit more. And in the line item budget, you do see a negative offset. At this time, we are projecting um, 36 out-of-district students at the region uh, compared to 33 budgeted out-of-district students in FY22. We should bring a table of the history just for informational sake sometime. So e and uh, we started the uh, start of the year last year with $1,627,938 in our e and account. We received $160,507 uh, in excess of budget revenues. We ended the year with a balance of $587,864. Uh, we increased the E&D contributions from three hundred dollars to 600000 to offset the FY21 budget in June. But again, this is in the reserve to reduce, and that is why we had to end with such a large balance. Therefore, I'm estimating $1,775,769 to be our FY21 E&D certified number, uh, which is about 4.9%. Uh, uh, and as you know, 5% is the max of the, gen of the general fund budget. Uh, this is a slide that you've seen before, uh, but here's a chart of our estimated savings due to the early retirement incentive. Uh, when someone retires, they are at the top of their lane, usually, uh, and when we bring in their replacement, we try to bring it in around 75000 or less. Uh, as you can see, the numbers here sort of speak for, them, uh, speak for themselves. So the district's OPEB fund balance increased to $7,569,232 in FY21. Evaluation will be completed by January 2020. The district has a level funded OPEB contribution amounts of 550 in FY23. Uh, that's our recommendation at this time. Uh, it's been level at 550 since FY21. It's, so. The way that they do the OPEB now is, is, is different than they did in the past. Uh, they, no longer give you a they no longer give you a schedule of when your payoff would be. 
Instead, they now give it a percentage. As of 6-30-2020, we are 30% paid of our obligation. Uh, they no longer use the ARC concept, which means they don't tell you to put in 550. Um, they, they, so what you try and do is you try, and I think that 550 amount right now is, is a good amount. Um, you, try and, uh, you try and put a number in that has the, the net position you know, going, um, going up every year by 3 to 6%. Uh, as shown here. Um, again, they no longer give a schedule as well. So being 30% right now fully funded uh, and having over uh, almost 8 million in that account um, is still, uh, I believe, the highest of any region uh, in the state. This, I feel like they're moving targets here. We set a path and then we say, oh, we're on the path they want. And then they change the way they approach it. And uh, yeah, so I still think we're in a good position. They keep showing it to us in different ways, um, which hopefully means it's getting more and more fine tuned as they find different ways to express it. But Well, this may be an impolite way to put it, but we're kind of hoping that uh, districts that uh, have not been conscientious aren't going to be held harmless. And Yeah, I, yeah, yes, they will be. Yeah. Prove the wisdom of what we did. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Uh, transportation, just a little bit about the, the, the buses. Uh, the region has 22 buses, uh, one of which is a wheelchair bus, the oldest of the fleets uh, from 2008. And as part of the FY23 budget, uh, we have budgeted for two new buses. Uh, we currently have 12.85 uh, FTEs um, for regular runs and 2.38 FTEs for the MECO runs. So total drivers, 15.23. Uh, uh, Healthcare premiums continue to rise at a pace greater than inflation. FY21 active employee premiums increased between 1.5% and 6.5%, depending on the carrier and plan. Rates in FY22 increased between 1 and 5.5%, depending on the carrier and the plan. Uh, recent estimates uh, predict a 6.5% increase in FY23 and a 6% increase in FY24. And then beyond premium increases, the cost of retiree health insurance uh, increases proportionately to the number of eligible retirees. Recent actuarial estimates predict a 6.5 per capita increase in FY23 and a 6% per capita increase in FY24. Um, as you know, uh, our debt is going down. Um, this chart presents an anticipated debt service amounts to the final high school construction debt service payment in FY38. Any future debt issuance requires, as you know, Concord and Carlisle town meeting approval. Here's a summary of uh, the CARES Act money spent and encumbered to date. SO1. Desi Emergency Relief 2 and 3. So as part of the American Rescue um, of Act of 2021, um, the um, CCRSD received $193,025 for SO3. The funds are available through September 30th of 2024. Uh, fund requirements include the following. Uh, district plan to safely reopen schools. Spending 20% of funds to mitigate lost instruction time. Plan to as uh, how to use the remaining 80% uh, and how that would be spent. Um, you must consult with your stakeholders to determine local priorities. Assurance of how interventions will respond to academic, social, emotional, and mental uh, health needs. Uh, considerations of these disp disproportionately impacted, um, impacted including low-income families, 
students of color, English, learner, uh, English learners, and students with disabilities. The deadline for the grant submission was October 4th of 2021. And it did not require a breakdown of the allocation into yearly increments. Uh, after a survey was developed and distributed to staff and families, the following expenditures became the priority. So the 15,000 for summer school uh, offset to the current budgeted amount and then $178.25 offset, uh, offset. So what we use for this budget right now for the reading specialist is we budgeted 65,000 of approximately a $130,000 salary. So in addition to assessments, uh, the districts receive state aid and other revenues. At this time, um, we level funded Chapter 70 and Chapter 71. Uh, I feel it's too early right now to, to project what the governor is really going to do before now on January 26. I do expect to learn in the coming weeks after I spend more time at conferences and roundtables um, what, 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 the, what they're thinking. Um, Excess uh, in deficiency or END, that offset is back to 300,000 in this budget. Um, at some point in the not so distant future, and I say this every year, I hope to reduce this to zero. Uh, but again, since we were at 4.9%, uh, we are in good shape to maybe leave that 300 in this year. All other revenues at this time were level funded. Uh, so overall, we expect approximately 3,932,000 $241 in non-assessment revenue. Assessments are based off the October 1 enrollment. On October 1st, Concord had a 77.41% share of the students, and Carlisle had 22.59%. As you know, these, these numbers drive everything. The superintendent's request is $36,644,994. The first box starts with an operating budget, which excludes the transportation and debt. After reducing the state and local revenue that we just went over in the last slide, the amount to assess is $28,483,426. From there, um, we, we assess the transportation costs after we apply the Chapter 71 uh, reimbursement offset. The amount of transportation assessment is 90,931. Uh, I'm sorry, 122,135. Sorry about that. Then we break out the debt assessment. Therefore, overall, the region's <clears throat> budget is increasing 4.77% without debt in Concord and 4.23% in Carlisle. Overall, the assessment without debt increase is 4.65. So I will explain on the Concord Finance Committee slides uh, that Concord based their FY23 guideline on the June reduced assessment. Uh, therefore, right now, if you're using that assessment, we are $436,414 approximately over it. If they had based their guideline on the town meeting guideline of last year, the delta would be approximately $199,076 uh, in Concord over that guideline. Uh, I have not received the Carlisle guideline yet. but um, So as you know, the Concord guideline excludes debt. I think it's worth noting too, as you saw on the slide before, the percentage of students was split between the two communities stayed very level, essentially, which is not always the case. As you know, just a reminder that we had a nice stable year there, which leaves the stable impact to both towns versus having to adjust for shifts that are coming. 
that it was about 0. 0.09. And what that did, it was about an additional $20,000 to come. Yeah. That's the most stable it's been in yeah. my five years here. So it's a nice deep breath when you see it sort of just everybody gets to stay where they are. So that is the region presentation. Thank you. <laughs> A lot of information. First pass. Chair, questions okay? Go ahead. Uh, make it simple for me again on uh, E and D. Yeah was 300, we increased it to 600, and now we're gonna revert back to 300 and effectively return 300 to E&D where it started, or? Essentially, yeah. So the, the starting place would be 300 instead of 600. Yeah. Okay. It was a one-time thing, and, and there was actually, we did highlight, Dr. Hunter and I, in the FinCom presentation that we based the FinCom project on the town meeting assessments. And that's what we did all of our numbers based on. Um, so, and that was highlighted in there. Uh, Dr. Hunter, reading specialist, uh, half of it borne by ESSER funds, uh, which for lack of a better way to put it, kind of masks the future impact if this is more than a, uh, a temporary ESSER remediation move. So that's why we're proposing only half of that be subsidized and the other half be in the operating budget. So when ESSER drops off, you'll only be looking to absorb half instead of the whole position. And it'll make the monies last longer too, obviously. Okay, so it would in fact be a, a, an implied obligation yes. in the future. Yes. Okay, because we wanted to, so we've got a cliff, but you made it smaller. Yeah, any any ESSER monies that we're bringing you, we've got the plan for when they get need if they're going to get rolled in because they're not supplies and one time events. Um, and frankly, even that became hard to find because many consumables we replace every year. So sure. it, it really just trying to strategically manage it so that it's not a huge jump down the road. At some point, it's when you're going to know is coming and can budget for. And this is to me that like we've talked about in some of Debbie's presentations, providing this continuum of services as these kids for whom we've built programs to stay in districts start to age up. So this was sort of an inevitability anyway. Yes. In some ways, maybe Esther's making it a little lucky to your point, sort of lessen this cliff or blow or whatever. What I personally hope yeah. and this proved true with one anomaly this year that we've seen as we fronted monies for these services and programs to kids, the out of district numbers have offset the cost. And so you aren't getting these big jumps generally in, in staffing costs or obligations because you get the jump, but you also got the drop somewhere else. So I would very much expect that as you've got a reading specialist and a language-based program intact, over the next year and two years, and kids coming up from K-8 have a place to go. Frankly, we're losing kids at the middle school even sometimes because they know there's no place to go, and we haven't put it in at the middle school yet. So as people get more comfortable, which we're seeing with some of the other threads of programs, um, I think you'll see drops in the out-of-districts, um, which is what we've historically seen with this one anomaly this year. So. And so that language-based classroom, it, that's for kids that are coming from the middle school or kids that are currently at CCHS. Correct. And is there also a language-based classroom in the CPS budget? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's an addition to the CPS yes, budget too. Okay. I think we thought initially, and Debbie's been a really big help to sort of see the big picture. I think we thought we were going to build the continuum up with maybe a little more time to get to the high school. And as we looked at the cases and what's happening mm -hmm. with patterns, we need it now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. so, I'm going to preface this with two comments. One, I don't fully understand it yet. Two, I think we need more time than tonight will afford us. 
That said, uh, I think the DEI director and a move to the METCO budget really requires some very careful consideration. Mm -hmm. uh, to my way of thinking, it redefines the position, redefines the strategic approach that I thought this school committee was taking. So I'm not sure. Well, let me clarify that that is completely up to you. It, it should not imply a change of the role in any way. It was, it was a fiscal, fiscal approach because it's an eligible um, expense under the MECO grant. But if I suspected you were going to have that feedback, I think I said it to Jared last week, they're going to want to talk about that. So absolutely talk about it if you think it's implying a different role than what you created and what Andrew's doing, um, because it is it is eligible. It does not mean it's where it needs to be. We have other eligible expenses that you could ask to be applied there and put the DEI director in the budget. So, because we have MECO in the operating budget, the MECO position, correct? We do have, and transportation is usually the biggest one. Part-time teachers. Part-time teachers, yeah. Yeah, there are other ways we could be. Can you shift that program. so that the METCO director is fully funded by the METCO grant and the DEI director gets funded by the right operating now, budget. Right now, the METCO director is, and it's split, split. between both. It's split, oh, it's split between six, yeah. two. Okay. What yeah. happened yeah. last, it really was last week, new METCO monies came in. And before we sent out the line item budget, we, Andrew, Ian, uh, Kristen, and myself, we worked together and then we put that with that new monies, then we put the, that we thought it would be best to put the DEI director in there. But we, we still have MECO people in the operating budget. Yes. So I think that all MECO should yeah. be. That's and totally that's, fine. That's always how we've done it. We've yeah, never, that's, we can certainly do that. And I think it's just clearer to the community. Yeah. We might have questions. Yeah. I'm not surprised I, I to have you say that. Mm -hmm. too. Yeah. So we can just simply swap positions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. And good timing. The MECO grants do Thursday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perfect timing. We'll do that for both. Just assume that it's CPS as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, can you pull out uh, today or next meeting public relations and legal? Are those uh, fairly static or do you? 60, uh, yes, the legal line has not increased. So the legal line is $40,000. Now we have a school committee section for legal and then we have a non school committee section for legal. Am I correct? Uh, we, it's all one line, one line in region. Okay. Uh, and it's a 67,000 at CPS. Yeah. We had broken out previously. It was broken out special education and school committee and we, it's all legal. So we yeah. have it in one line now, but we break out the costs and internally we know. Yeah. Yeah. And public relations. That's Tom Lucy's position, which is level funded. Okay. Can you just remind us what's the difference if you if you don't if you if you look at the the difference from FY twenty two to twenty three in the actual percentages? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So good question. A little bit more about that. I certainly can. So the, as you know, everything, when you look at the line, how can I explain this? When you look at the line item mm -hmm. budget and you compare it, it's CPS. That increase is real. It is a 3.75% increase, whatever it is. At the region, you're also including debt, but also there are, when you have the $36 million budget, 3.8 million of that is based on other revenues other than assessments. So what you do is you first, you put that number in and I can pull it up and it might, yeah, can, it might be easy to give a visual. Um, I have it right here if that's faster. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm talking about the, the difference between if how FinCom is processing oh. And how oh, I think the line. Why don't you pull your FinCom yeah. slides up? Sure. This will be Concord's version, obviously, yeah. at yeah. the moment, but you'll be able to. Yeah. No, the other stuff we went over. So yeah. <laughs> it would be very helpful if you could show how they made the 2.74 and then how you would calculate it based on the town meeting assessment. And then what is the delta? 
Yeah. Yes. Between the two yes. percentage wise. That's what's in the finish. That's going to be. That's all they want to know. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's what's so, in the slides. You yeah. said something I still wasn't clear on that from the slides. Right. Instead of the 436, it would be 198 or something like that. Is that what yeah. you said? Yeah, 199. Yeah. But yeah. So we could get the percentage yes. difference between the two. Just do the regional ones. The region. <laughs> Yeah, you have to blow it up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go to find it. Okay. So I'm going to start with, does everyone have it on their screen? Because you probably, okay, good. Okay. So... When they did, when when they just go into slideshow, Jared. That, can you go to slideshow? Make it bigger. Uh, yeah, make it bigger. bigger. Yeah. Great. Oh yeah, it's kind of small. <laughs> oh my god. See that? I'm moving back a little more. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. So when 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 they did when they did this um, when we did this exercise. I'm going to start with this one. When we did this exercise, we use the town meeting, the town meeting appropriation, which for CCHS in Concord was twenty four million six hundred and eight thousand six hundred and eight thousand seven hundred and fifty. And I'm going to use round numbers, but that represent that represented basically sixty nine percent of the entire budget, because again, remember you're having additional revenue that is not part of the assessments. You're taking the delta of that. So the, the enrollment only comes into play with the difference as well as the regional uh, uh, transportation costs and the debt costs. So when I did the exercise, I said, okay, we got to make it all add up to what their assessment was of 24,608,000, which was, it was really like 69.143076. That was, and Carlisle's was, it wasn't, you know, 31, it was more like 26, 27, or, or lower than, actually lower than that. So what we did was, is took all these categories and we figured out how much Concord's assessed portion of each one of those categories were. Then what we did, if you go over to the FY23 preliminary guideline based on E&D at 300, I took 2.7% of the FY22 appropriation. And that was their preliminary guideline. So if you added that all up, there, and there is a little footnote in here, um, that it's, it's a little bit off due to rounding, their preliminary guideline assessment would have been 25,123,866. If you back out the 3,179,377, that is the number that they gave us. So then I compared that to what our request was and what their assessment is with debt, which is 25322942 And the delta, you can see if they used the town meeting assessed uh, amount, the delta would only be 199.076. And what's that percentage? Uh, that percentage is... Um, That's not on the slide. That's what they're going to want to know. <laughs> that and I have it. I have it in my notes. Um, right, that, 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 that yeah, to get it on the slide. Um, now, how come the difference between this twenty four to twenty five? That's a lot more than three hundred thousand. The difference between the, so the, it's the they wanted the difference between what the guideline was and the request. So if you so their guideline would have been the twenty five one twenty three eight sixty six. In our request is twenty five three twenty two. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's the difference. Okay, yep. 
So then what I did, and this is, this is what we, this is why it took a little bit longer than expected because I wanted to show, okay, what if they, what if they used, which they did use the decrease assessment because we didn't do that work before we weren't asked to do that work before we were asked to do basically the, what we thought the town meeting assessed portion. So then what I did is I took the, the reduced assessment, put the uh, appropriation. So instead of say 69, because we reduced it 300,000, then they were like 68.75%, which believe it or not makes quite a bit of a difference. So instead of it being the $24,608,000 number, the reduced assessment portion is the 24376779. Then I took all of those numbers and I added 2.7% and paired it to what our request was. And then the, de the delta... Um, of 436, 414 is the difference between our current request and the reduced assessed amount. So that's why, if you remember the slide, it's showing that the assessments at Concord are going up over a million dollars uh, because, again, they're using that reduced amount. I think they gave us just over 576,000, I think, as a, as, a, as a guideline number. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's very, con it's confusing. Uh, I'm happy to answer questions. Um, I don't know if that made it more complicated for you and confused you even more, but I'm good at that. Regional budget's good at that. Yeah. Um, especially now that we've got two different sets of numbers. So, again, what's the difference between well, your guideline and what we're requesting? I've got this on this slide. The four. That's the. Yes. So good. Yep. So the current guideline that they have, which uh, includes the decreased assessment, we are going up one million seven thousand nine hundred forty uh, nine hundred seventy two dollars at Concord, or four point seven seven percent. So here's the percentage. So four point seven seven percent. If they use the town meeting approved one, mm -hmm. then um, we are at, we didn't add it. No, you don't have that one. Um, we can I'll get you that. Easily. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's really um, subtract um, uh, approximately 236,000 from this. And we're 199 over their 575 guideline number, give or take. Um, so instead of being a million something, we're only one ninety nine. Yes. Well, we're so are we are um, a million is the total difference. The one ninety nine is the difference the between the yeah, guidelines. Seven. So there's a two percent. Yeah. This is the total increase. If, if we need to shave two percent off. Yeah. To yeah. Get to the two seven mil. So if their guideline number is. Um, I don't know why I don't know it offhand. It's I want to say five hundred and seventy thousand dollars, which represents two point seven percent. If you add the four hundred and thirty six thousand, you get the million. If they use the other assessment, you have the five hundred and seventy thousand number, and you added the one ninety nine. That's where we would be at. My instinct is they're going to use the lower assessment because that's what they've been asking us to work with thus far. And it's going to have to be part of the guideline discussion, how they navigate, how they manage this $300,000. That's my instinct. I think you're right. I think they're going to say your decreased is our actual. Right. And I think the town, yeah. when we brought it up with Parashar, I think, yeah, I don't know, whenever we brought it up with so him to be sure he it. saw the differences. He felt the town had done the same thing because they also contributed some of their surplus to lower their number. So they're having theirs is much more straightforward than ours in terms of how it plays out in terms of the numbers. But they've got a gap to fill because they fronted they fixed some of their own issues last spring, very much like we did to say, we'll fund mm -hmm. some of this and lower your number. Um, so, so we got that in a couple of. Places. So we approximately two percent off or. 
I'm not really sure. I can get you the exact. I'm just going to stop sharing for a second. Um, yeah, you can do that live, probably. So we are, if I did the assessment at 300,000, at 600,000. So we are. <coughs> Let me show you a couple of these other slides just so you'll have seen them before they go to the finance committee. We would have been about 3.67%. Makes sense. So we are just under 1% over their guideline. Okay. So, so I, we have a, we need a better presentation tomorrow because I don't think they're going to get that with any of the current slides. So we, we've built the slides that they asked for. Yeah. No, no, no. So I get it. We'll need so, to preview it with them maybe. But, so just... I thought you said just said to us that they are going to want to go with their original guideline, not with the what you're proposing. But we we in this presentation, we went with their current guideline. And that is why you saw in that presentation a million dollars um, as um, as the assessed amount. Right. I understand that. But you're in clinic, you're hearing from them that they are OK with making the modifications. Yes or no. Please. They told us to, well, we don't know. We don't know. I, I, I think my assumption like that should be part of the conversation Thursday to be sure yeah. they're clear. I don't think they know. I really don't think that they knew. My concern is that we meet again before we'll really know the answer to that in terms of do we need to talk about cuts more? Well, I'm just not sure. So on Thursday, if, why don't we walk through these slides really quickly just so you see we can talk through all of what they're going to see. They're going to take this information to start to inform their final guideline. We are meeting again next week, purposely, before they actually set the final guideline. So I was seeing it as an actual conversation where we bring to you the dilemma, for lack of a better word. We bring to them the dilemma, get some feedback from them. I think we're going to get a sense of which direction they're going to go more than my intuition, a direction. And then we can come back next week and actually talk on that. Because, direction. right, why I'm bringing that up is I, I wanted to maybe be more proactive about finding some areas where we might be able to make a few reductions if we have to go 2%. You know what I'm saying? I would strongly ask that you not do that until at least next week's conversation and okay. see what, they, what they're thinking. Then we don't meet again until January 11th, right, with a hearing. Because what you got to remember too, if they're, if you're using that assessment, they're only they're only really giving us an additional what three four hundred thousand, not the five seventy one that they I guess they were intended to. Or you increase the E and D amount, which I wouldn't recommend. Um, but you really, if, if we use this amount, the increase that the region is getting is much less than the two point seven percent. If you're trying to hit that guideline, um, I think we were extremely clear. In the presentation that we gave in the fall, that we were basing this off, that the um, the original assessment, um, and and I think that's something the community. But it is confusing, so yeah. we need to go Thursday night okay. and make sure they understand the differences, see what the numbers are, and then I think we have a dialogue with them. Um, to, to pick up on on your comment, Cynthia, I don't think you meant we're striving for uh, hitting anything at all right now, rather right. what we're doing is striving for the kind of readiness we're going to need. Yes, exactly. I just, I don't know. Nimble moves that uh, might, might come our, come our way. I, I think FinCom has to understand loud and clear. School committee has looked at this and that's all we've done. Yeah. Right. Looked at it. They are. And we haven't touched it yet. Yep. Exactly. Okay. All right. So just really quickly. So you've seen what they're going to see. The timeline is here. It's the master view of both budgets broken out in the categories that we brought to them back in the earlier part of the fall. It's what Jared just showed you. <laughs> exactly. This slide, I wanted to make sure you saw, and I did consolidate both districts. Um, really, they're looking not just for strategic objectives, but issues in terms of fiscal issues. So I've done a little bit of both here. So they saw all the strategic objectives come up again, just like they did earlier, but also named some of the big things that we always have to watch when we put budgets together, contractual wage obligations, enrollments for the high school. It's about the assessments for the 
K-8, you'll hear later, it's about enrollment numbers and declining enrollment. And then we just, I wanted to be sure we named E and D and our use of ESSER, circuit breaker being available. And then this, since we're on the region, this just breaks out. We're going to plug in some numbers underneath the, hun- the 1 million just to show them how it splits out. It's the same as the chart in a slightly different form. And then the overall picture, which is, this is the table they ask us to fill out. So they have it. And I think that's pretty much the rest you've seen. So. And the uh, sustainable growth chart was theirs. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I, from everything I heard, and I don't know if any of you saw or were on, both the town leadership and the finance committee thought when the town was there last week. This kept the conversation really productive and at a yep. thoughtful level of cost and why we spend what we spend and not just numbers, which was, yep. I know, Parishar's goal. So, mm-hmm. so I, well. I just have a question. OPEB, how are we compared to the town? Because that's going to come up. Uh, I don't know that off the top of my head. We're both in good shape, but I can tell you to what degree. So we can I'd just like to know yeah, they're yeah. 35 or you said we're 30 or something. We are 30 right now. Yep. yep. So that's usually where people have been pushing or pulling on OPEB is that they want to be consistent with the town. You can find out. Um, and they might pull back as well. Um, is there OPEB excluded from their guideline? Yes. Mm-hmm. So ours is not. So, so you know, yeah. Um, Jared, could I have you return to the two new buses? Sure. Um, are those split or are those uh, two on the region side of the house? So the two on the region. In, in on the region. Yeah. All right. So I can only speak for myself here uh, and say uh, we are pleased with our efforts to electrify. Mm. I think we're going to really need uh, a careful look at, at uh the fleet and our capacity to uh, manage the wide variation in potential expenses mm-hmm. given grants and not grants and so on. Yep. Maybe we can bring in our new sustainability director on this too to have another set of eyes and ears on funding potential. I think with each increasing year, we're going to be more reticent. Again, speaking for myself, yep. uh, be more diesel streets of Concord and Carlisle. I think at the region, you have a very different option because it's subsidized by the state and that hasn't changed yet. Um, So to your point, I think you could continue to talk about it at the high school for sure. I like to be conservative as possible about buying diesel buses. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It's just, you know, maybe down the road, they'll say, we'll buy them back for you and give you, you know, but for right now, they, you know, Department of, they had a program where you could get rid of your 2006 buses. So we don't have any of those. We, we did small participate in some of that yeah. trade in, which meant we had to keep the old ones around yeah. long enough yeah. to <laughs> have something to trade in. But, you know, yeah. we are honestly the biggest mobile polluter in town. And I don't yeah. like that yeah. label. <laughs> and they're not healthy for kids and or our drivers. So yeah. um, as, as aggressive as we can be, I know it's a, it's a financial trade-off, um, but they do, um, you know, there is a return on investment where they require less maintenance. And obviously if we're getting, if it's cheaper than diesel f- fuel to, to run them, I hope that that, it, that is the case um, that we can, and I'm not even sure what we pay kilowatt on the electric buses. I don't know. Okay. That might be good to know, <laughs> but, you know, versus diesel, but yeah. So the path ahead is uh, Thursday night, and then we gather Tuesday with new information coming our way periodically. Yes. If you could put together a memo on Friday, Mm -hmm. just Mm -hmm. sort of where your position is, their position, or our position, um, and then sort of frame our discussion for our next meeting. We are actually Carlisle FinCom on, is that Monday? So we're there with them before we meet again as well. And you expect the conversation? It's a preliminary guideline. We're given the okay. conversation. Yeah. Good. So, so Carlisle's not there. 
Concord is. Right? This is this is more like. Yeah, yeah. Understood. Yeah. We'll bit ahead. <laughs> we'll just give them the school committee presentation. We're not going to do the breakout of their assess. If you do, there you have an error in one of your slides. On slide six, you just have the wrong. You have to fi fix your totals. On the school committee slide. Yep. Not the FinCon slides. Not the columns. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not a big deal. Yeah. Thank you for proofing. Your, your head does start to spin looking at these. <laughs> yeah. Cut and in, paste. Cut and paste. So yes. long, you can't even see it anymore. Is this the FTEs? Our flip with the, yeah. the total. I got it, Jared. Yeah. I know where it is. Yep. Yeah. Show you. All right. Okay. Did we get through everybody's questions? Any other? No. No. Oh, good. Okay. Great. Now we'll move to SR3. I think you touched on it in Jared's slide. I don't think mm -hmm. there's much more to add. So we just wanted to be sure you saw it all as a package. Okay. The October application doesn't uh, preclude subsequent decision making on our no you can amend it oh, okay yeah all right action item go to approve the capital plan we move that the concord carlisle school committee vote to approve the concord carlisle regional school district capital plan for fiscal 2023 as outlined i'll second that all in favor? Or discussion? Aye. Sorry. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Just, it, are we clear that everybody is supporting? The this is lights. the, uh, the lighting, paving, 23. lighting and paving yeah. with the Inside idea of that uh, we've got a lot of work to do to coordinate with the town of Concord. Uh, the Educate engineering the yeah. still required. The interface between road and lighting and sidewalks, lots to do. Good. With, with the number as outlined by Mr. Stan. Very good. All right. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And with that, uh, we're turning to public comment. If there's any member of the public who would like to comment, please raise your hand virtually or put your camera on. And See none. I will take a motion to adjourn the region. So moved. Lucky you. <laughs> Get a second. There a second. I'll second. <laughs> Are you going to keep me? <laughs> I will second, Sarah. <laughs> Is it worth to you? No. Hi. 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 Good night. Have a great night. night. Thank you. Nice. Does, and the Concord will stay in session. Yes. yes. Does uh, anybody in the Concord School Committee request or like a break? Oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. Very good. You got another long budget round, so it's up to you if you want to take a break. Let's go. Go. Okay. 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 So I just budget. The first is. discussion. All right. So middle school building project update. So a few of us can weigh in here. The committee met uh, last week, discussed potential additional value management or value engineering and uh, took no action. Uh, and uh, we have a budget ceiling uh, that has been declared by various parties, including the building committee of 103.7 million and a budget that in round numbers is 102.7 at the present time. The uh, committee meets again on Thursday morning at 7.30 mm -hmm. by Zoom. And uh, then we have a meeting tomorrow night that I think Alexa will speak to um, on the sustainability side of it. Uh, I think that's really the extent of it. Yeah. Sure. We, um, on the communications front, we are continuing our robust outreach. We have two engagements this week. One is um, a panel discussion on a specific 
topic, which we selected sustainability. It is a new format that we haven't done. We're lucky to have Matt Root, who is a professional in that area, who sits on the building committee and chairs the sustainability subcommittee. We have, I forget gentleman's name, but someone from the Concord Climate Action Network and um, one of our professionals from the architectural firm who will speak um, on all matters related to sustainability. That will be tomorrow. Um, it'll be held virtually by Zoom. We'll have a link that will be out to our giant list of stakeholders um, first thing in the morning. Um, and then we also, oh, I guess that actually is our, is our big engagement this week. We are working um, on some additional smaller forums um, or engagements with various groups in town that still keep coming to us, um, looking for us to visit their meetings. So it's exciting. We are continuing to do outreach on that front and it's been pretty successful. So we're excited about that. I was at the COA this morning for about an hour and a half with five senior seniors and they were primarily representing Concord over 60, oh, which yeah. is great. I hadn't, that's a group I hadn't connected with before and a lot of great questions and a lot of great questions, yeah. really forward thinking, several of them, um, both educationally, fiscally, all of it, and um, a lot of interest in community use of the building as a group. They're struggling for meeting space regularly, so they had a very vested interest in whether the building would be accessible. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. really great. So we have uh, the public hearing on the 16th, or further along in our agenda, we do have some items to go over that will be discussed at the public hearing next. So we can hopefully do some of that tonight, maybe some on the 14th. Um, I personally do have concerns about moving into the DD phase with little or no construction experience on the building committee. Um, the high school was successful with a construction manager at risk and with a chair who was a construction expert and definitely pulled that project out of trouble. Um, so I just, I would ask the committee to rethink the construction manager at risk. I think the investment is well worth the insurance to protect our investment of a hundred million dollars. Um, so I, I just, I think this is a huge undertaking with nobody in town, honestly, who's experienced to manage a project of this enormity. Um, they did have that discussion, though, correct? A couple of months ago, and they voted, they voted not they vote, to do that. Right, the, to do it. We, we had the discussion uh, mm -hmm. early last summer, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was like a summer, summer early yeah. fall. It blurs together. But. The... Uh, yeah. Architect and the OPM, uh, even prior to any debate, were strongly in favor of design development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Design bid build. Mm -hmm. uh, design bid build, excuse me. Um, uh, rationale, uh, how, how big a factor was cost, potential cost saving? Don't know. Because there is a potential cost saving with design bid build. Yeah. But there's yeah. also a potential for uh, risk uh, avoidance that uh, can't be had because we don't have somebody with that level of competence uh, pouring over the details every day. Mm -hmm. right. And it will soon be an everyday yep. risk right. management uh, situation. But that won't be revisited again. It's already been well, voted on and will. It's been voted on. And what I'm hearing the chair say is. Uh, she would like it revisited. With, our, with, with the ambassadors on this committee to that committee, Alexa and me bring that statement back I'm sure you said yep statement being would you reconsider and i think it's fair to say uh re-examine the pros and cons at least for public scrutiny if even if it's not yep. debated yep uh around whether there's a change in, in heart it might be uh further understanding mm -hmm. as we enter this next more critical phase are, are there any but I, what as when I think about that, I think, are there any new facts on the ground that would warrant the introduction of that debate? Well, we did have a serious problem on our high school project. 
but that wasn't, but that was, had been established long before, like I'm saying prior to the debate that the committee had, that was a known fact. I think that was part of the discussion. I just worry, is it appropriate? Your question, um, things have changed. Uh, construction costs and volatility in the industry has changed. Yeah, that's my. Just this last week, uh, uh, Newton scrapped, I think, six of their 13 school solar projects for the time being because they just couldn't pull them off given the industry Still. climate. So I don't know if that's a good Right. Yeah. representation of what's going to happen to us. But, uh, but yeah, there is some volatility in the industry. And we do have a, we do not have a town manager at the moment who is going to manage the bids. And that's my big concern, honestly. So it's just. Well, and that was my first answer to Alexis' question was, what's changed? The continuing struggle to manage the budget. It has been tough for this. Right? Speaking for myself, I think it's been a, a tough task for the committee to strive toward that hundred million dollar. In common, you've been somewhat adamant about. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're there. Right like here. you're there. Like the, the budget is the budget. It's there. It's set. You're at one hundred two point seven. We're going for one hundred three point seven. So we're there at one hundred two point seven. So I guess. I'm confused of like, what's the struggle of the budget now? Because we're there. So what happens is if you go into design phase, mm -hmm. you go over, you're going to have to pause and go back to town meeting or reduce the project. If that's the case, right. But if we have a I mean, I think we're, there are a lot of hypotheticals going right. on here. Well, on... It, usually it doesn't go down, especially in this volatile climate. But that's, I hope it goes down. I love that. But I just don't feel like we have the proper experience on, on the building committee side. And there are people who believe it will go down. And people who and that would be awesome. People who believe the opposite. And right. the answer is we don't know. We don't know. Right. But I just don't want it, the thing to go off, right, the, not off the rails, but I have to but pause. My next, my next question would be, there are budget implications to see them at risk. That's yes. then. But everybody says, that, you know, the, Construction people I've talked to, and people have said that at the end of the day, it saved the high school project a considerable amount of money, millions. But, but again, I worry we, as we've concluded our value engineering discussion and we move towards the special town meeting, mm -hmm. what is the timeline to reintroduce that? And I, don't, I do not know. I, uh, I do not I'm know. just worried that the time for the reintroduction of this has unfortunately, in what I see, come and gone, that opportunity. Okay. I'm just... I, again, I, I'm just sort of... As a as elected official, I'm just very concerned about the lack of you know, losing our town manager at this juncture and how will we yes. manage the project. I yeah. think that's a question the that the committee needs to address. Hmm. At, you know, for the public hearing and for town meeting. That's all I'm saying. So, yeah. And the select board have been quite public about their concern that we have not been able to recruit I know. construction expertise we need. I thought we had made time. some progress on that. Was that just speculation? I believe there's been a lot of effort and it hasn't yielded anything. So you're looking for some more construction expertise on the committee, the select board is? I thought we'd potentially I found Matt somewhere. Johnson had someone in mind and had spoken with them. I don't know where that's at, but I yeah, I, I know there was someone recently, very recently engaged. Yeah, I, th mm -hmm. I think there's a very short line between the difficulty getting uh, construction volunteers and mm -hmm. the design to go uh, design bid build. I think that is why some of our construction experts in town have been reticent. Is because yeah. they, but I think that effort's been construction it, manager at risk and said, uh, thank, thank you anyway. So I guess my bigger question is if I could get, I think that uh, the citizens, you know, before town meeting need to get a really clear picture of how we're going to, how the project will be managed. Well, that's where I see your conversation, your, your comment going is uh, that this, this committee, I think would in any event, whether you had made that remark or not, 
uh, paused at uh, the beginning of design bid build to say, let's get clear on process, how we're going to mm-hmm. manage this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, what is the, the extra significance of that understanding, given the fact that we have uh, some movement in the town manager's seat, because mm-hmm. he was so very instrumental to mm-hmm. the cost management side of this. Yes. Yes. You know, that's- As will whoever's in his seat, even if it's an acting or interim. They're still very responsible for all of that. So, Lori knows from how she's had to reallocate her time around this project. What does it mm-hmm. mean for folks mm-hmm. in townhouse when when out comes a shovel? Yep. Yeah. Okay. People, people's lives are going to change. Yes. I think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or all right. Have. Next, I think we're into yeah. the capital plan. Yes. You've got that ready. Up. Yeah, please. <clears throat> Aaron can do it. I don't know how much depth you, we've talked quite a bit about this. So I think we're just going to have a conversation if there's any other pieces you want to discuss. Yeah, this one really hasn't changed no. since no. we no. first looked at it. Uh, does, the, does the borrowing uh, that happens at the town level happen uh, incrementally as we determine we need it or? Nope. Oh, it does. Yes nope. or no? For this, it does. Thank you. Okay. I guess I... Just oh, I thought you meant that they. I missed. I misunderstood your question. Okay. So Can they I, don't front load the whole nine hundred thousand, Ian. I mean, is it's it? available right away. It is. Okay, okay. that's what yeah. I wanted to know. Yeah. Okay. It is. Yeah. Yep. Thank you very much. Okay, got it. So I neglected. Uh, Alexa just alerted me. Terry Ackerman has her hand raised, and I'm not sure for how long, but you know, she would like to. I think. Oh, do we do public comment again at the beginning? Well. You yeah. can recognize her. Yes. Terry, did you have a comment? Just to answer your question, um, we do have a citizen with construction experience Great. who is ready to come on the uh, middle school building committee whenever there is an opening. So um, that is something that the select board is trying to figure out. Okay. But- a gentleman is very interested. He has a lot of great experience in construction. Oh, well, let's get him. Very good <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you, Terry. That's great information. Can I just clarify that? Whenever there's an opening, does that mean that there needs to be a vacancy before he joins? Not necessarily. There's been talk uh, informally, perhaps. Uh, the select board has the prerogative to change the composition of the committee yes. and uh, bring an extra seat to the table. Yeah, I think one way or another it will happen. You know, okay. unless some, you know, somebody might step off. And you know, sometimes people, as phases end and begin, sometimes people. So they have somebody ready to go, and right, so just need to figure out add the person on, and yeah, okay. need to work. They need to amend the charge. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Terry. All right. Sorry about the interruption. <laughs> sorry. So back to the capital plan. Really any questions, I think, is where we're at, unless you want to have us talk on anything. So uh, for Alcott, which is our big, biggest expenditure, if I'm, is that correct? Uh, ERU? It is. There are some things in officially as well. Um, but that is the largest uh, single. single one. And is there, uh, is there any grant associated with that work? Not that we found. Yeah. We did... Yeah. Can we work with Amanda just to confirm that nothing has popped up or nothing new? Yeah. Um, Does any of the Ripley work uh, get brought to Carlisle's attention? The perennial question. Yes. Yes. I think we've been talking on whether there's a fiscal process that 
perfectly fits. And the answer so far is no, but Mm -hmm. definitely it can be brought to their attention and it may require some other fiscal arrangement that doesn't currently exist, but it should be brought to their attention. So there's no precedent? No, no. The misbuilding couldn't be any more complicated than it is with yeah. Percentages of percentages. <laughs> percentages of percentages of percentages of. Yeah. Yeah. I would just ask that in, in our trying to be fiscally sensitive that we re- remove the 55K on the canopy. So, I don't know mm-hmm. how others feel. It's a little extra. For Ripley. Yeah, we had heard that before when you spoke on it. That's, I think that's fine with us. I have an umbrella. It was for you? It was for me. I have an umbrella. I'm good. You can't get in. I, uh, all right. Anybody else? I can go either way in the canopy. I'd love to see it. I'd love to not see it. I don't really have a preference. Well, I'm going to make an ask. This was on one of the prior versions. Um, If we're not going to do that, if we could take that 55 and allocate it towards an inclusive, accessible playground at Thoreau, which we had talked about previously, and it kind of fell off the plan during COVID. We we really have little people over there who can't access the recess equipment. So I... I'd be thrilled if you put that investment in my mind. Yes. Yes. All right. If you could bring back um, or just admit, well, I guess we could. They still have their money there, Lori. They do. PTG has money from years ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's, it's significant. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. More than the 55 we just talked about. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So that would be a great augment. Get something going over there. So 55 becomes... uh, I believe they have 65 or 70. They have significant funds. So significant. Yeah. Yeah. So 55, up to 55 is available. Is that what I'm hearing? From our allocation, yeah. With negotiation to be had as to. Yeah, get a design, see what we can okay. get for the design. The With PTG money. has matching funds, at least, I think. So. Yeah, if you just confirm that before we yes. make the allocation, we have time. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Good. We only invested that much. Yeah. I don't think, the, I think what they, think they meant to spend it, but, <laughs> they it, but <laughs> they're very active. Only because it's been so long. It has. It I has. was working on that project. I know. I was at Thoreau, which has been like three years, four years. Yeah. Oh, good. We had it COVID. We've really had some momentum going and then yeah. we closed. So, oh, well, I'm glad if that would be a boost. I think that's money wisely reallocated. It is. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yeah. The Elka Playground got funded with a jumpathon. Yeah. And they did jumper, but literally. <laughs> it's All right. a lot of jumping. <laughs> so, uh, Cynthia, do you expect a vote for fiscal 23 only on this tonight? Or I'd just like to confirm with the Thoreau. Just, I think you're fairly sure, but just so we hear that they're what monies they have. Yeah, I'll check in with the PT pros. And the PTG FY23 program. is yeah. something that's yep. attainable. I just, you know. Sure. We can do that for next week. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Don't like to do that assumed thing. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So I think we're on to the budget, unless there's other questions about the capital plan. No questions. Okay. So while Jared pulls that up, I'll just do a few highlights of the CPS budget or the thinking we had to do going into it, probably even more so. Special education, again, in the continuums of the programs, uh, the places we're looking right now to request extension of the branch program at Alcott, which is social emotional. Right now, because of the age of the kids in the program, it's an upper elementary program. And so if we had needs K2, we couldn't really place them in the same place. So we're sort of, you know, managing those kids wherever they are right now, knowing we don't quite have that all set to go. 
the middle school is the biggest focus for programming. Both the autism continuum needs to, to be in place there. That is in the operating budget. We then need the language-based program, which you'll remember we had um, suggested be an ESSER, ESSER funded piece. Um, right now it's fully in the budget for ESSER for this year. I think we would wean off of that over the coming years before ESSER dries up so you don't have a whole FTE to pick up down the road. And when does ESSER stop? 2020. Four. Yeah. Okay. September 30th, 2024. 2024. That's expended by. Yes. Yeah. Is that? Expended by. Yes. Uh, yeah. Encumbered by. Encumbered by, I think, with funding through June of 25. Okay. You can. I'm pretty sure. We'll double check. That's the town. Three years. And with the ARPA. Okay. That's the same kind of rules. Three years. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the special education pieces. What we're saying to you right now, all of those programs would need other support staff between a really deep review of where we currently have support staff that we might reallocate and likely some savings on out of districts. Although it's going to be hard to keep getting savings when you're only sending 15 kids out. So uh, mm -hmm. at some point, we're not going to get that savings. It'll be savings because we never spent it, not because we're actually lowering the number. Oh, yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Um, eventually, you're not going to get that because we're getting so tight, but that's good news. Um, so that's the special education piece. Um, in terms of mental health, we had suggested an adjustment calendar at the middle school to be funded from now till the new school opens when we can consolidate counseling staff. So we don't see that as a cliff with Esther because we expect to not continue it forward um, and consolidate. Uh, and then the third piece, just so you note this, with the enrollment trends, we are really, and this I think you'll remember from last year, although we did the budget later, so we had more information. Um, the census numbers are down. The NESDAQ projections are down. Last year, the way we built the budget was to reduce a couple of kindergarten sections and then know we had contingency to put back. We did have to put back. Um, this year, we're, kind of, we're in the same exact place and the census numbers are almost identical. And so our, and we're doing the budget earlier. So the unknowns are almost bigger rather than less. Mm -hmm. What we did decide to do is move up kindergarten registration to January to try to get those actuals coming in faster. Uh, but essentially, we're going to take a little risk here again and strategize that if we don't, don't fund, I don't want to overfund positions and then be suddenly having too much staff terrible right. way to say it, but you know, that we don't have kids to fill those seats. So we'd rather underfund positions and then find contingency to work through that later. Um, but it definitely is a topic for us, uh, especially at K when we're just trying to get a sense of who's out there. So um, I think so, uh, otherwise, oh, go ahead. Forgive me. So in, in a rough sense, then you're projecting a possible K reduction of two again, so what we did this year, um, we're reducing one going into one. this budget, okay. figuring that's manageable it's, if we have to put it back. If not, uh, we'll be we'll be status quo. So. Okay. Do you have two schools with three classrooms and two one school with four? We have two schools with four and one with three. Okay. So Thoreau's at, I'm sorry, Alcott's at three, Willard and Thoreau are at four. But I assume not crowded four. I, I'm sorry. Not crowded. It's not a crowded yeah. floor. And I can bring you all the class size numbers. I always love those uncrowded floors. Yeah, we yeah. do love the uncrowded. Our class sizes are running, and this is where it gets interesting. And we're spending a lot of time with, the, and I'm looking at Kristen this time because we're we keep meeting with the elementary principals to look through this. Mm -hmm. We're somewhere between 15 and 20. My ideal spot's 18, pretty much, especially with yeah. K2. You can go higher into three, four, and five, and get to mm -hmm. 20 or 21 or 22. Um, but when you're only talking three to four sections. This the 18 isn't a choice sometimes. It's either 15 or 20, no, and you get sort of stuck being like, oh, I know. It's a little bigger than we wanted, or it's a little smaller than we wanted. So those are the decisions we're trying to work through and knowing we have to keep looking at it as things change over the course of the school year and then we build some room in over the summer. So but I think those are the themes essentially. Um uh, other than that, it's a pretty level service budget, and I think that's a good thing. We're doing well with what we have, and we'll let you get into the details. Great. 
So this is just like the high school presentation. I think a lot of it will be redundant because the way that we organize CPS compared to the high school, because the high school is one location, we have five different locations at really six different locations at, um, at the CPS budget. We have Alcott, the three elementary schools, the middle school, an elementary location, as well as a district wide. Um, so I sort of talk about these numbers a few different ways. So I think I should answer a lot of your questions uh, and then uh, I'll take plenty in the end, unless you need to interrupt me, uh, go ahead. Um, so here we are with the budget timeline, um, here, December 7th, uh, recommended budget, uh, going all the way to May 1st, Concord Annual Town Meeting. And then again, the important number, uh, important date here to know is when the warrant articles are due to Concord. And then the public hearing is, the, is uh, January 11th. So the superintendent's recommended budget for FY23 is 43,323,170, which is 3.87% more than FY22's approved budget. The 1,000 function includes all the salaries and expenditures for administration, IT, HR, and other central office-based staff. Non-union salaries were the one budget driver in this section due to a 0.6 FTE increase in human resources. The need for this position became clear uh, during the pandemic. For something to be considered a budget driver, the expense category must increase by 50,000 or more. A cost savings is the same thing, except a decrease of 50,000 or more in the expense category. Uh, this year, there were 36 expense categories at CPS compared to 43 at the high school, uh, and 12 of them uh, compared to 15 at the high school or salary categories. Um, so you're probably wondering where that other um, FTE went in um, the non-union salaries of the support staff. That position was carried at CPS. We increased that portion at the high school for the accounts payable position. So that's why the increase is 0.6 here instead of maybe 1.2 is because that accounts payable position was budgeted at CPS um, and the increase was the high school increase. The 2000 function includes salaries for teachers, assistants and tutors, assistant principals and principals, substitute, substitute costs, all of our school curriculum costs, school supplies and materials, special education contract services, and equipment. Salaries for teachers account for $1,384,002. Of the $1,895,696 um, increase in this function. I will speak more about um, teacher salaries throughout the presentation. Another large budget driver of the assistants and tutors, which are increasing 294624 in this function. Supplies and materials are increasing $60,039, uh, mainly due to increases in everyday math. Um, we do have some, as well as some, um, some, reading, um, uh, some reading instruction materials. We do have some cost savings in this function, including curriculum instruction, which includes teaching software, textbooks, library books, and periodicals. This category is decreasing 110243 <coughs> We put back, um, uh, I'm sorry, the 3000 function includes our transportation expenses, nurses, athletics, and student activities. The largest cost driver in this section is due to special education transportation costs, which are going up $125,196. The 4000 function includes all of our maintenance costs. <coughs> Last year, we negotiated with our custodial maintenance unions in that category is um, our largest, our largest increase in this function, uh, we reallocated 0.1 FTE, FTE in maintenance to CPS, uh, which as you saw was a, a decrease at the high school. Fixed charges include reti the retirement incentive, uh, our sick leave buyback costs. Uh, these two lines are decreasing by a combined $142,780. Other small expenditures in the 5,000 function include uh, postage and small liability insurances. Uh, community service is the private school transportation salaries. 
about 3.67 FTEs are dedicated to these runs. Fixed assets are increasing $24,650 uh, because we were adding two new bus leases, uh, but two bus leases are actually falling, uh, falling off. Uh, the new bus leases are slightly more than the ones that are falling off, and um, we'll get you more information regarding uh, diesel versus electric as well for the CPS. Uh, lastly, special education tuitions are reduced by $528,459 from FY22's budget. Tuitions are down uh, $366,680, and our offsets are going up due to increases in circuit breaker and IDEA, uh, and I'll speak about those in a future slide. So I've identified $2,123,855 in budget drivers made up of eight expense categories. The first is the teachers. Uh, as I stated in the last slide, the increase is 5.9%. Uh, Next, due to special education programs, our tutors and assistant lines have increased an overall amount of 321000 uh, these are all based on our uh, current need, uh, and they're also keeping um, kids from going out of district. And I'll speak more about those in a future slide as well. Uh, support staff total lines are going up $75,346, and that is mostly due to the addition in the HR position. Custodial maintenance increases, uh, uh, those were discussed in the last slide. Um, salary uh, for principals and assistant principals are just a driver just because the total overall cost is going up. Uh, overall contract services are up 4.32%, but mainly due to increases in special ed contract services that are needed to keep uh, students in district. And lastly, teacher stipends have increased due to special education training this summer uh, that is budgeted on research and development, DEI building leads, and an increase uh, due to the need in mentor stipends and mentors. <clears throat> to offset the budget drivers, we've identified $781,482 in cost savings. Again, our special education tuitions are down uh, a total of $528,459. And that is the breakdown. Sick leave early retirement is down 142,000 and <clears throat> the curriculum instruction savings are here as well. The FY23 recommended budget includes 419.6 FTEs, which is, is 11.35 FTEs more than the FY22 budget. We budgeted approximately 35,625,000 um, on staffing in the general fund. The only FTEs not included uh, in this total is our CAF workers who are paid out of the food service revolving account, which is self-funded. We have about 8.5 uh, FTEs charged to the food service revolving account. Uh, and then I will dive into some of the FTE changes when we go to the locations. We budgeted approximately 445,000 of our total CPS MECO allocation um, towards the um, 0.4 for teachers, 0.4 for the DEI director, 0.4 for the MECO director, uh, 3.7 for tutors and monitors. Uh, They're at uh, Alcott, uh, MECO coordinator, and uh, 3.68 driver salary. We can make the switch that we already spoke about yep. with the DEI director. Um, we use our Title uh, I monies on tutor salaries and set aside about 139556 in FY23. Lastly, we charge preschool teacher salaries to the preschool revolving account. We estimate re um, receiving approximately $140,000 in uh, tuition revenue. Here is the uh, special education tuitions. The total is 1.5. Uh, 
And then the offsets is uh, 1.1. Right now, we are. You could see the smile under my mask with this slide. <laughs> I think when we were here, we I need to do five year. years yeah. of history because this is extraordinary. So much changing so much faster than I would have expected. So this slide speaks for itself. It yeah. does. It does. And also knowing that you've built programs to keep kids in district. It's not that we're just keeping kids in district. No, because right. we've got built programs to keep right. them in district. And, you know, when it gets to the Thoreau slide, does that mean we're providing one-to-one -one assistance for many of these kids in these programs, especially the odd, that strand? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course it does. Mm -hmm. They're here, they're with us, they're right. growing in front of our eyes. And yes, we happen to be saving money at the same time. But good stuff. Agreed. So Angel's offered, invited you all to come over and visit because she wants to show off. So yeah. let me know when you want to go and we'll, sure. yeah, we'll bring you over and you can. Oh, that would love to of our, our young friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll send you an email so we can write that up. Here is the early retirement projected savings. We've all seen this before. Um, again, when somebody retires, they're usually at the top of their um, their lane, uh, and we try and bring somebody in at seventy five thousand or less. And here is the projected savings. CPS has twenty two buses, two of which are wheelchair buses. Uh, the oldest of the fleet is from two thousand and eight. Currently, we are getting two buses through leases, and two leases are falling off. We currently have two electric buses. Uh, the newest one was actually delivered last month. Hopefully, um, it usually takes a while to go through inspection, so we're hoping to get it on the road, hopefully next month at some time. If not, probably shouldn't have given a date, but hopefully in the next month or two at the absolute latest. I think the E-Line took three or four months a number of years ago, and so... Hopefully we can get we can get her on the road and, and use it. Um, it's beautiful. Um, we we have uh, twenty six point seven three total FTEs at Concord uh, for drivers. Nineteen point three seven of these are used for regular routes. Three point six eight are designated for Meco routes, and then uh, three point six eight are designated for the private schools. So overall, the preschool budget location is down 0.55% from FY22 budgeted. We have a total of 15.87 FTEs in the preschool program. 6.8 of these are, uh, FTEs are teachers. Uh, while the tutor line is increasing 11.14%, we've had some changes in personnel from who was budgeted versus who filled the position. In addition, the cost of living increase was a bit more than budgeted. The contracted services are special education related and are being moved to a district-wide location. That is going to be a theme throughout all of the locations. Lastly, the curriculum instruction line is now consolidated in the district-wide location for, for preschool. Overall, the elementary location is going up 9.56% from FY22 budgeted. We have a total of 15.2 FTEs in this location. Um, this is an increase of one, uh, which is for a new curriculum academic coordinator that is being requested. Savings for this is coming from the curriculum PD lines, uh, which you will see when we get to the district-wide location. In addition, we budgeted for a retirement it's 75,000, but the replacement for this position was filled by an existing employee who was uh, on the higher side of the salary scale, but there was a savings when we filled that person's position at the school. Also, the nursing line includes additional days for nurses and the stipend for the lead nurse, and that is the reason for the large increase. And the stipend for the lead nurse is just for CPS. It's not region. No, it's combined. It's, it's combined. Each yeah. district com contributes, contributes to yeah. it. So it's okay. it's a pre-K okay. to age 22 H position. Okay. But, yeah. 
It used to be separate. This is far better to okay. have one person supporting all the nurses. Sorry. The Alcott location is going up 3.45%. We have a total of 69.95 FTEs um, budgeted, which is a 1.81 um, increase in FTEs. Contract services are being moved to district-wide. Curriculum instruction accounts are going down 47.27%, primarily due to the software account savings. Uh, the professional development line is increasing 13,700 uh, for reading instruction supplies and materials. Uh, teachers are going um, up due to 1.0 due to the need for a new special education branch teacher. Uh, supplies and materials are increasing due to uh, supplies needed for everyday math, as well as for the reading instruction. And lastly, um, utilities are projected to go up 5%. Five, uh, 5%. The Thoreau location is going up 6.95% from FY22 budgeted. Uh, the request for FY23 is 85.84 FTEs which is nine more than budgeted in FY22. Due to special education needs uh, and programs, our assistance and tutor lines went up this summer uh, seven FTEs. To help support these programs, we've added an additional special education uh, teacher. In addition, due to projected class sizes, um, we uh, had the need to add another K section. For the same reason as Alcott, curriculum uh, Instruction and contract services are down. Um, supplies and materials are also up 9.8% due to everyday math. And then the 5% increase in utilities. The everyday math increases because of the three year renewal. So every three years we have. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, always, it's frustrating that it's not just level. So every three years we have to come up with this big amount and then it drops to nothing. It's just how tech, just how these companies operate these days. We want to spread it out in those lines so yeah. they're in the schools, Yeah, get the real cost. The uh, will location is decreasing 0.73% overall. The FY23's request includes a reduction of 3.86 FTEs that we are still reviewing and still evaluating our needs, um, including two potential tutors that may be following students to the middle school. Again, still uh, looking into that. Uh, so that, will, that accounts for two of their increases. Our teacher's line is decreasing 0.5 due to a reduction of 1.0 in, uh, in K uh, for the time being, just again, due to the current, the current numbers. The speech and language pathologist line is, is increasing 0.5, um, but this person works in um, all of the multiple elementary schools, schools, multiple schools, and is just being housed here in this budget. Um, Which line is this, Jared? This is the speech language pathologist line. So it went from 1.5 to 2. Where does it show on the chart? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Under teachers. Okay, cool. Oh, it'll be teachers. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Um, because the teachers, I wanted to explain, the teachers are only going up, going down 0.5, and that's due to a reduction in K, uh, but then an increase in speech language. So I just wanted to show that. Okay. So that's the delta. And then for the same reason as uh, Al Alcott and Thoreau, uh, contract services, curriculum instruction, and supplies uh, are down, and supplies and materials are up. The middle school location is up 5.36% and 2.4 total FTEs in uh, FY23. Uh, many of these may be offset by ESSER 3. Like the elementary schools, the middle school's portion of special education contract services is being moved to district-wide. Curriculum instruction is also down due to reductions in math and social studies textbook lines. The tutors and assistant lines are decreasing a total of one. Um, even with the increase um, coming from, from Willard. The tutors and assistants are reducing, um, I'm sorry, they're down one. Yep, down one. 
There's an increase overall of 3.4 FTEs in the teacher's lines uh, due to special education needs. The budget includes three additional special education teachers and an adjustment counselor, again, which may be offset by ESSER. There are also some moving parts um, in English, world language, social studies, and science that make this overall a 3.4 increase. And then lastly, uh, utilities are also going up 5% based on projections. <clears throat> so overall, the district-wide location is increasing 2.8% and a total of one total FTE. Contract services are the largest increase in this location. Uh, as I stated, we consolidated all of the special ed um, contracted services line, uh, lines in this location. Um, the interim special ed director is zero based all of the special ed needs throughout the district, and this was the result. Case transportation costs are projected to go up 110,000 based on their formula, which bases the costs on ridership from two years prior. Professional development is up 6.67% overall. Um, the reason for this is uh, special education related. Um, they increased uh, eighty one thousand um, for their special ed, uh, for their for their needs, but the curriculum staff development decreased forty eight thousand, which is helping offset the requested academic coordinator. The administration line is up 0.4 FTE, uh, but. Uh, at this time in this budget, but no general fund costs um, because this is the DEI director, um, which is budgeted in the MECO grant. For the moment. For the moment. We'll offset that. Yeah, nothing. Yep. No, no. Our tutors and assistance line is up 0.5. Uh, this is due to the need for a special ed uh, bus monitor. And the maintenance custodian line is up 0.1. Uh, but is down at the high school. Substitute lines are up 20,137, but that is actually because we reduced all of the special ed subs in the school locations and brought them to this location. This is not an increase um, to our sub lines. It was just all moved and put in this one line. Salary support staff is up 5%, but not any FTEs. Um, if you remember last year, we budgeted a 1.0 CPS METCO coordinator at the end of the budget cycle last year uh, for approximately $53,000. 26.5 came out of the METCO grant, um, and the rest came out of the general fund. But we didn't fill that position, so we carried a full FTE, but half the salary in the budget. In addition, we did not budget a, for a 0.1 transportation clerical uh, position this year. Therefore, these positions add up to a minus 1.1 FTE, but we did add a 0.6 HR support staff, a 0.2 accounts payable, and a 0.3 DEI interim, intern. This adds up to 1.1 FTE. For these reasons, the increase is 5%. Our teachers category line is up 15.34, but no FTEs. Uh, we reduced 0.6 um, district-wide speech, but we increased the CPS side of the special education coordinator, um, 0.6, because this person is now K through eight. Um, when she was budgeted last year as a K through 12, um, she was budgeted in partly in the high school. So this is not an overall added position, but an increase to CPS and a decrease to CCRSD. I mean, decrease, I say decrease. Um, also, K-5 to grade level chairs are now district-wide and moved out of their locations. So that's a wash, but it's showing up as an increase in district-wide. Uh, and that was an addition of 27,000 in this category. Sick leave and early retirement lines are decreasing 142,000. You can see the special education lines are shown here uh, and the decrease there. 
Uh, the mentoring, special ed research, and development training in the DEI leads account for the increase in these stipends. Here's a summary of uh, what's been spent or encumbered to date. And as part of the American Rescue of 2021, CPS received $995,840 for SO3. The funds are available through September 30th, 2024. Fund requirements include district plan to safely reopen schools, spending 20% of the funds to mitigate lost instruction time, plan as to how to use the remaining 80%, consultation with stakeholders to determine local priorities, assurance of how the interventions will respond to academic, social, emotional, and mental health needs, consideration of those uh, disproportionately impacted, including low-income families, students of color, English language learners, English learners, and students with disabilities. Uh, the deadline for the grant submission was October 4th. and does not require a breakdown of the allocation into yearly increments. Uh, after a survey was developed and distributed to staff and families, the following expenditures became the priority. And that is the CPS presentation. All right. Questions, comments? I had a couple of special ed related questions. So the tuitions um, at CPS, are they just moving on to the region? So the decrease in the tuitions at CPS, is that because those kids are moving from eighth grade up? It shouldn't be. We usually be. roll okay. them up when we budget. Okay. Um, occasionally things don't go as planned and something rolls when it shouldn't, when we didn't think it was going to, but okay. we, we roll them up now. So we budget for where they'll, they'll be in the fall. Okay. Yep. And then the, um, the nine additional FTEs at the row. So there's a special ed teacher at K section. Are the other FTEs, are they tutors? Some assistants. Assistants. Okay. All assistants. They're all assistants. And then um, the last one is just the, the special ed coordinator K to eight. So is that's a change in, in the whole overall job. And I'm assuming, was that because Deb's reorg things a little bit or? So it's, that's Michelle. Budget. Right? Yeah. yeah. So we had budgeted, we created the position last year, brought it to the committee and asked for a need for an in-house. We had an out of district coordinator. We needed an in-house district coordinator. Right. What we learned in that April to June period was we really needed <laughs> Because once they get to the high school, it's just communicating with the high school, not managing the programs the same way. Right. It really is a K-8 position. Okay. So really what we did was take the ask from last spring and label it and budget it according to what the role really is. is. Okay. It's not, it's K-12, but it's really K-8 K to 9. To 9, know, and and transition 8 to 9. Yeah. Off, so. Okay. Okay. Just being more accurate. Okay. What the role really is. And to a large extent, she's been, because Laura Brand is so strong at the middle school, she's even focusing a lot on K-5. K-5, okay. And probably the transition from five to six. Correct. Okay. Correct. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> We've got this nice continuum of special education leadership now with her coordination, then the, the position at the middle school, Laura, and then than the um, administrator at the high school, like mm -hmm. Debbie mentioned, that's mm -hmm. proving to be really effective. Okay, thank you. No, good questions. I have one not particularly significant question. I noticed um, the field trip line has was zeroed out at CMS, but I did notice as someone with kids in elementary school, we've resurrected at least to the STEAM lab um, some, which my kids all, uh, love, um, we've resurrected some of those things is, is this, um, you know, zeroing out of this expenditure, an anticipated continuation of a COVID sort of oriented structure, or is there just not a need at the middle school or it's, 
It's COVID. Huh? Yes, it's, it's COVID. 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 So we're anticipating having, a, yeah, okay. And if that changes, we can probably reallocate funds yep. as things. Yeah, they're not significant, up. which is why I didn't right. think it was a big deal. It's but. three thousand. Yeah, it's yeah, they're in. Yeah. So they're they're going on trips to outdoor places right now and to the steam lab. Yep. So we're better than we were yes, a year ago. Yeah. Um, I just didn't know because I, I personally have experienced the resurrection yeah. of at least some yes. field trips. Yes. If that was something different. And the CMS field trips typically are to the right. courthouse yeah. and they're to places that aren't allowing visitors in. Right. Right. <laughs> The STEAM lab also uh, involved some PD changes as well. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. No. One thing that we're also hoping to do for um, the middle school is to start bringing the kids to this. And it was, that's an FTE change, if I'm correct? Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Okay. So a team would bring their students here, and we would rotate them through just starting to work on how we would I want to go back to the thorough uh, special ed FTE changes. It's a change fiscal 22 budget versus fiscal 23 budget. Is it, is it a change in actual meaning have we had to bring in these people in the interim? A little bit of both. Oh, okay, um, so thank for you. special ed, we had the two settings for the autism program. We really needed a third, the kids, just too many kids. So we did do that over the summer. Um, with some of our contingencies and the assistance that required. And although we reallocated people too, we don't just add on one-to-one -one if we can find them elsewhere. Um, the K position, we waited that out as long as we could and then, then did that. So um, the assistance, however, didn't all fill in already. We're projecting forward a little bit too. So it's a little bit of both. There's a lot of moving pieces with those programs and we've added the enrollment complication on top of it. So. Um, the DEI intern, I don't know if the timing on the DEI subcommittee and the timing on budget preparation is going to sync up. Um, so I would simply point to Tracy and Lori and say, to what extent can that sync up? Mm -hmm. And yeah. we can think about adding that probably to our January yes. agenda. Yep. Just so you hear, you know, the snapshot version of where Andrew's vision has gone. And I think we've all agreed there had to be some more leadership to to the work and his idea which i think is a great starting point is to stipend to lead teacher at each school and really you know build a team he can work with and i um think we use that model very successfully i look at kristen because she uses it in a couple of different ways and i think that's a successful model partly because we empower teachers to then work with other teachers and it's not just leaders to teachers it's teacher to teacher um, so we're excited for that. And then the intern is meant to be a potential recruitment pipeline right. opportunity. And are any of the teachers involved in the training, the DEI training at, um, um, I'm going to get the name of the mm -hmm. college wrong in Newton. Um, something came across. Oh, William James. William James. Oh, William James. James. Actually, are, Andrew's in that. Oh, great. Yeah, we work with great. them in a number. Of, I was actually just on the phone with them yesterday about some of this work. So we are interfacing with them in a couple of different places. He goes to the round table they host. Mm -hmm. um, he's talked with them about the program they're running for DEI directors, which is different than the round table. So yeah, they're doing a great job. Of right. And I, I thought they had a program for current teachers too. Um, we'll have to look. Yeah. So I didn't know if anyone was involved in that. No. Okay. Right now. Right, right now we have two teachers who are training to be trainers. Okay. for our ideas workshop, which is becoming a more culturally competent educator. Mm -hmm. And one at the region and one at... Yeah. Thank you. So um, tell me a little, I'm a little confused because Court just asked about the STEAM lab, but we're, you, so can you tell me a little more about the Curriculum Center Specialists? So this says we're, yeah. yeah, we consolidated funds previously supported a science specialist and a stipended social studies position. Are we not going to have those anymore? We have some retirements. On okay. The, yeah. Well, it just, uh, it's not clear. Yeah. So the hope is to uh, sort of reorganize those positions so that we can uh, spend about the same amount of money, but um, get a, a little more um, because our 
science, elementary science curriculum is done. Our STEAM curriculum for K to five is done and our social studies curriculum for K to five will be done. And so all of those will just need some tweaks after that. They don't need the big um, construction that they have been going through for the last five years since the new standards came out in both science and social studies. Mm -hmm. And then um, fairly significant though. As you know, oh, the yeah, social standards. studies because our frameworks haven't really caught up. I, I've yeah. been looking at them, yeah. so, so they're a little um, out of date. Social studies for elementary um, were all done, all five strands except our last is putting in the economics strand, which is hilarious. Planning mm -hmm. for you know kindergartners to buy and sell things, yes, in the classroom. <laughs> Um, so, but very important. So with those consolidations and those curriculums kind of being close to done, mm -hmm. um, we want to add, uh, someone who can really help us look at big data mm -hmm. for, uh, pre-K to 12. Now that we have all these screeners in place and we're tracking all kids progress, we want to do it at the district level, not just at the uh, school level. Uh, and so see which interventions have worked with which students and um, make sure that we're helping all our struggling learners. So. so this is how many FTs? I'm just trying to understand one. It's just one person. Yeah. But that, so you, okay. There, that's a, a lot. There is an, it, it is. It <laughs> is I mean, is, you're yeah, looking she, for the. <laughs> yeah. She converted one position last year. So one, per, one person's already started to take on this reorganization. This will be the second. So hopefully round it out and give us a, a wider berth here. You know, it's every district struggles with the elementary leadership because everybody teaches everything and trying to support teachers that way. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, and I neglected this at the region. So I just went through software. We significantly reduced elementary K-5 software. I did the math at Concord Middle School and it went up slightly similar to the region. So. so we just redistributed the cost. The cost actually went significantly down by 30% um, for software. But what we did was all the ubiquitous software that's used in every subject area, mm -hmm. we parsed out into, you know, math, into social studies, into English, their portion of it. So um, that was one big change that we did. And the other one that we did was all the software that we had been field testing um, which comes out of a district budget when something's being being piloted. We then uh, adopted it, moved to adopt it, the teacher committee, and then we put it into their budget. So the big one that you'll see uh, in, in all the budgets is R360 is our screener for reading and math. Mm -hmm. so it used to be in a pilot budget, um, and now it's right in the um, reading and math budgets at the elementary English and math at the middle school and the high school. Yeah. But though, so I'm just saying the, the elementary, I just looked at it, was the K-8 was reduced by 40% or something. But I looked at the middle, the middle school department software budgets are up a little. And something else is probably is down. Not probably something else is down. Yeah, there's a line that doesn't say lines. software. Yeah. So that's the yeah, thing. It's so like, hard that's hard to follow. But in the, the high school, again, the software department lines are all up. up because there's no more overall software budget. They're all in the departments now. Right. It's just that they're in terms of equity, you know, like social studies and English have significant budgets. And then like math, it's like there's not as much math software out there. As yeah, it's just like 25,000 yeah. versus three. It yeah. just seems. A little, and if you look at the high school and middle school lists of software that we cut, Thank goodness we got to mm. cut all the math software that we use during yep. virtual teaching because it's not that great. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And then let me but we had to notes. use it. And then, so currently in HR, we just have one FTE? No, and part of, I was going to talk to you about three times and I didn't with the Ripley stuff. Um, we really, we had tried to reduce from where we were as we have had attrition. Mm -hmm. So when attrition happened, Really, Jared would try to relook and reorganize between his business office yeah. and HR and keep try to reduce some positions. Okay. And that proved really hard 
to make work. So okay. we've piecemealed back. I think we're probably level to where yeah, we were. Sorry. Yeah. So, oh, so, so what, how HR many has a uh, full-time three. administrator and two support people currently, currently actively coming. Oh, so we're not adding any FTEs. Well, they, they were after the fact So we, we hired reallocated, reallocated. Okay. Yeah. So, and then so in a, three, three actual represents an increase over last year's budget, not an increase over personnel in the office. Now. Right. Correct. Right. And then, so then in accounting, we have how many? In accounting, it, we reduced it mm -hmm. two years ago, a year yeah, ago, absolutely. and now we brought it back. We had a, we had a resignation that was a 0.6 mm -hmm. um, this summer. Um, and then we, we, it was trouble. We were having trouble doing it at the 1.6. And then we, we brought back the 0.4 uh, that is split. And now we have uh, a full 1.0, two full 1.0s in AP, which is what I had when I. So what in total? The total in the business office yeah. is two payroll, two accounts payable. Uh, an assistant business manager, an accountant, and myself. So are, is everybody full-time? I'm just trying to... Oh, yeah, everyone's... Yeah. Now, You've they got are. Six, now, they are. now they are. You have six FTEs. Uh, oh. Seven, including me. Okay. And that, that's going to work. So yeah. that yeah. should be stable. And that, again, is yeah. seven actual, seven continuing. Yeah. And the budget isn't really clear on that. I can't tell, but maybe it's just sprinkled around. I There's been look. a lot of moving pieces. Okay. I'm not surprised you can't tell. I think that's why he was so specific in the yeah, description. Okay. <laughs> okay. With well, and the reason I was um, only because if you if you saw a zero FTE increase but saw an eight percent, I felt like I had to explain that. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't, but I, I felt yeah, like I had should. to. Yeah, <laughs> and that's but it gets it gets complicated because I'm very literal when I do the FTEs. Um, I like that about you. So I think that I think your notes are narrowed a little crazy to say that currently, <laughs> currently we have this many FTEs. Yeah. You're not asking for an additional. No, no but no. I wanted to show it because it's different from the FY22. Yeah. It just seems like, um, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, not. two is a two, an HR director and two FTEs is very nice. So <laughs> yes, we're so, nice and stable there now. And so, so just sort of on that theme. The one thing I would like to see a little more of regarding DEI, as far as we're trying to increase our um, staff, is, is real investment in specific objectives with programs, things that you know might cost money, where we can do a more, a more nationwide kind of searching for the, the pool here, as I, I would say, is probably really limited. <laughs> and, and You're talking about hiring, not DEI. Yes. Hiring. Okay. Hiring. Yeah. Staff, not just teachers, all staff. Um, we joined a couple diverse. of different places last year that we had um, a great. I don't know the names. I don't need everything yeah, tonight, but it's just yeah. food for thought, just something to think about. Yeah, no, we, you want um, to have a widespread um, reach because it, it's going to take. It's it's going to be a slog. Like it's going to be hard mm -hmm. to do. Um, and I think you know, I saw the um, department. They said they even had mortgage. Um, assistance programs. Um, so I think we just have to, you know, pull out all stops and in, in trying to attract people to a relatively expensive area of the country to live in. Um, especially if we're thinking about getting encouraging people to relocate to this area, it probably probably looks fairly daunting. Um, but if we could figure out any way to make it less so, I think that would be great. I mean, your salary schedule helped someone do that this summer. Just yeah. But just so you know, <laughs> and then so just person of color. <laughs> yes. uh, and then we, just to let you know what we're already doing, we have three search nationwide, nationwide search organizations that we work with that attract uh, faculty members of color and they feed directly into our school spring and they talk to each other. Right. We also have literal people going through resumes on the line, not looking for candidates to find us. We're going to find the candidates. And it really worked out last year because 30% of the staff that we hired last year um, identify as people of color. Right. And as you know, you need to get a little momentum so that right. people feel like yes. it's a welcoming community. So I just, I feel like if we could just get a few more, we would yes. just no. extra investment in getting that momentum going that, you know, we might yeah. be able to get a. Another investment. I'm not sure if it 
came out clearly, but if you look at the reading budgets in every mm-hmm. single one of the schools, there's a pretty big investment in getting more uh, literature that reflects our uh, student books. body. <laughs> yeah, actual books, like hard copy books. Right. Right? That's awesome. Yeah, but I mean, you can see at yep. uh, the high school, it's $11,000 because we're talking, we have a review committee to look at new core texts, um, at least one in every grade. Uh, so that that's a significant, and that's true literally at every level. Excellent. That is that is wonderful. And I do think it's also important to note that we've talked at, at, at the DEI committee level when Dr. Martin says, you know, people are recognizing Concord as a place that people of color want to come to because, that's you know, we good. are leading the way in, in some areas. And that's just important to continue to notice. Excellent. You know, and Lori's been tapped for, um, you know, Massachusetts. <laughs> you know, round tables and committees. And, you know, so, so I think it's really important that we continue to do this work. And I yep. think that our reputation is going to help attract more candidates yeah. of color. Good. That's Great. awesome to hear. Kristen, with the three firms, is it like a subscription service yep. where we mm-hmm. just pay in once? And yeah. So we did all three of them new last year. Mm-hmm. And then we looked at the returns and two of them were not great. We, mm-hmm. You know, um, but one was really good. So we focused on that one and did this year a higher level of um, engagement with them. With the one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Cynthia, my, my perspective on the, the DEI is a little bit different. Um, Good. And I, I would frame it this way. I want us to be very careful not to build out DEI uh, in terms of personnel and resources faster than we build out our measurable objectives. Yes. So, so we know where we're going yeah. with these investments. Sure. Uh, I'm, I'm worried we're right at that point where the worry is legitimate. Well, I'll leave that to the committee. Mm-hmm. The committee. Yep. And we'll certainly, you know, continue to have these discussions. And, you know, as I said before, hopefully we can vote at our next meeting. I think Sarah is going to put it on the agenda to just make the entire committee Mm-hmm. Um, the subcommittee, and we can certainly, you know, look at times of our meetings to make it accessible for everyone to be there. Awesome. Any other questions about the budget? No, I want to thank everybody for the, the work yes. you into it, not only uh, Jared and Ian, but I know people up and down the district. A lot of people, correct. Getting it this far. Yes, yes. the building. Yeah. Yes, heads and all the department chairs. Yes. All right. On to Esther. Again, I think we've referenced that in the slides. So you've heard what Mm -hmm. we're recommending right now. Um, I don't know if we need more discussion on it tonight. Uh, Hold on. I'm going to round about the region. So in terms of the offsets for the FTEs, are the, so are they split like you were describing the FTE at the region? They are not for this year. Um, so I think the language-based one, our recommendation would be to fully fund it from ESSER for this year, but probably to start weaning that down over the coming year or two. The counselor is fully meant to only be an additional position during the life of ESSER because the building, the other, the new school will come online fairly simultaneously. So we expect to be able to consolidate and not have an actual additional FTE there. Who's the current, so who do we have as an adjustment council? We do not have an adjustment council at the middle school. Why wouldn't, it sounds like a very important thing that we need it is very important. I do think we have an opportunity when we consolidate schools to look at caseloads of counselors and work within that. Oh, I see. So you currently... Two buildings force a low case count. I'd rather not talk too much on No, 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 but I, w- I would see the skill set and the qualifications for adjustment counselor to be different than a guidance counselor. Correct. And I would look for some pretty... Yes. So that's why I'm thinking... We need to maintain it. I understand what you're you saying. You would maintain it. I'm, I'm agreeing with I you know. completely okay. that you would maintain it. I think you've got room to look at consolidation of the of the the traditional guidance counselor positions. We're already committing to that five. I'm just, we've got to be careful about our piles of money. 
There's things I can tell you offline that I no no I know, but I think that'll inform the. I know, but we we've committed to the five seventy something savings, correct, and that we're trying to being asked to actually, right? You know, hand that back. Discussion isn't part of that. Just so you know that. Well, I you know whatever happens down the road, I think we as to avoid that cliff, right? Um, I. I think that one of these two should come off and go into the budget. So whatever you think, I mean, if you think the language-based special educa- ed- educator at CMS is going to definitely stay, um, it sounds like it should. Why are we looking to move this from ESSER into the budget? Because it's not ESSER, it's not going to stop. Like, we're going to keep that language-based classroom, right? Well, would you not want to offset some of those costs? Well, I'm concerned that in 2025, we're going to have to add 500K of So salary. our recommendation, which we don't have mapped out for you on paper, yeah. would be to fully fund the language base now, but for FY24, partially fund it. Mm-hmm. And then for FY25, you're fully funding. So you wean your way into the FTE. Right. I do believe you do not need to add in a, in a counselor position when the grant winds down. I think you'll be okay to consolidate. Not it. Because of the building consolidation. Yeah. The redeployment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're trying to be thoughtful of that for sure. Sure. And is there any other SEL or professional development? I just feel like we really need to look at some of the high needs beyond this work of our students. And our teachers. There's no question. Krista meets with the mental health team regularly, and our kids are showing us that they've been through a, two years of trauma. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any specific needs that are being identified? Yeah. There? So, um, like huge groups, we brainstormed all the um, preschool to grade 12 school psychologists, guidance counselors, adjustments counselors. Um, we brainstormed kind of five areas. And one is um, for trauma-based uh, mm-hmm. instruction to become a more um, sort of trauma understanding uh, school site, both for COVID related, mm-hmm. but also just in general. In mm-hmm. general, yeah. Yep. Uh, another one is looking at LGBTQ mm-hmm. needs within the school and the curriculum and uh, culture, uh, and then the uh, cultural competency um, for students of color. Uh, is another one. Um, we wanted to look very carefully at um, force and parents, you know, families that are splitting up or changing in, in different ways. Um, and then what's the last one? Oh, um, kind of severe, um, we call it brain health, um, mm-hmm. but looking mm-hmm. at kind of severe mental illness um, within the classroom. But do you, do you feel like you could use, how would you, do you need more funds to, to do that work is what I'm trying to say? Nope. Okay, fine. Yep. So what we do is take the whole district-wide funds uh, and split them up for the professional development paths that we do. Um, and a lot of those are focused on cultural competency this year. A few on special education, like executive function and so forth. And next year, I see that kind of reversed. Do our teachers need help? And I mean, mean that seriously, and our staff. Yeah, and, and we are having those discussions. Uh, Chris and I are at the high school staff meeting this afternoon, starting some discussions of approaches, um, strategies. It, I'll be honest, they weren't going to cost us a penny. It was just to look at how we're operating and to, to regroup a little bit, in this case, in terms of structure and um, setting. You know, some, some of this is boundary setting. Some of this is nurture and care. Some of it's you know, relationships, all those different layers. So that's the good news. A lot of that work comes with time. The cost is time, I would say, more than finance. Yes, but that's what I'm saying. You might need money. (laughs) Right. Yeah. So people willing to do work after question for sure. All right. So on to what's next. Any other, Esser? No, thank you. Good. Uh, so I think we discussed asking for another week to just confirm the thorough 
So we would not vote on the capital plan. Did I jump ahead and miss something? Yes, that is what you mentioned earlier. There's oh. a little bit there on the middle school on the agenda. The middle yes. school. I keep popping up to the regional agenda. Sorry. Financial offsets. Yes. Thank you. Can anybody read that? I will challenge you. So our assignments are. Cost efficiencies from building consolidation. Right. Am I correct? All of this has been discussed in various forums at this point. Yes, and the numbers are there in, in, in a number of various forms. Not as some of it, not as much directly here, and some of it's follow up to what you've discussed here. Right. So this chart is what we worked on with a select board at the brainstorming for ways to pay for the middle school is essentially what this came from. So we've been asked to be able to respond to this prior as part of the public hearing for the school on the 16th. So we wanted to be sure you looked at that. I assume we're going to, Cynthia, were we asked for written feedback to them or just a readiness vote to discuss? So okay. we, are there any, are we like meant to sort of discuss or debate this at all? Uh, whether I guess somebody has concerns about that number. Um, I dug out a slide that so if there's wait, so I can, I'm sorry to interrupt. So if there's not a number, does it mean it's already there, off the table? There is a number for that particular thing. It's five. Oh, no, I meant it just, I'm sorry. I was speaking in general. Like of, of these oh, line items. Sorry. Correct. Yeah. That, that means no, nobody kind knows. Of off the table. Off the table. I don't know what that means. Well, so. I'll, I guess I'll just get specific, um, like naming rights on buildings or rooms. There's no number. So right. I was just wondering, would that be something that we would debate? Like, for example, the, it's in our domain, I see. Yes. Yep. That we would debate the merits of and potentially Correct. even prior to any of these meetings, you know, moving forward, we could take some things off the table. Yes, potentially that. For no, no, no. <laughs> um, it's, it's just, I guess I'm just being specific now. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> Rather than asking a general question. I think yes. I got left as a, a task to yeah. research it. Okay. That kind of an open-ended yeah, yeah. process. Mm -hmm. and I, right. I get that. I was just wondering, like, when would be the time to... Is it right now? Yeah. Is that it's, your yeah, question? Is know. it tonight? Are we discussing this tonight? I, yes. 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 Somebody, okay. So that, this is how I would approach it. If somebody feels like they would want to pursue looking at naming rights, then I think we would say, we will take a look at it. And it sounds like a great idea. And, you know, we'll just sell. Or conversely, could the conversation be, is it appropriate in a public building? Let's have no one pursue it. Exactly. Okay. Right. So that would be, that would we know be where I still. <laughs> could start with the easy one. That might be the easy one. So she'll just keep going down. So we have that 548 number for the, um, the efficiencies it, that could go up or down. It's, it's at this point, I think it's really difficult to say Any, a number larger or smaller than that. Sure. We'll just stick with that one. Mm -hmm. um, we do not have anything to do with the sale of the Peabody School. I'm just going to next. Our next one is a rental income. We're working on our facilities fees. I don't think we can predict that right now. Will there be some? Sure. Will it be substantial? Probably not. Yeah. No, right. and our purpose is not revenue generation. Right. No, right. it's just, yes. So Protect our asset and yes. Anything. Um, Self-naming rights. I'm getting, um, is anybody interested in pursuing that as a significant revenue source? In the school committee. I mean, I personally don't think it's appropriate um, to put names on a public building and sell it. And mm -hmm. then I, there is in parentheses, it has Concord Ed Fund, and that would not be under the Concord Ed Fund's mission to offset the cost of the building. And we've got a policy we'd have to pick yes. out as well. Oh, yes. That would, already yeah. On that one. Um, CPC, I imagine that we are a. Uh, legitimate contender. Um, the CPC committee reviewed their 
current asks, which were about equivalent with their available monies. Um, they didn't have to turn a lot of people away. Now that's, this changes year to year. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. uh, so I don't think we're qualified to say what it should be, but we are certainly qualified to ask CPC, how receptive would you be? Because they do like that kind of dialogue yep. early on. And we'll have to look to our new, you know, for grants, either federal or local. I think they'd be in the sustainability arena. We could possibly get any. So tends to be where there's monies. Mm -hmm. but even then, qualifying is tricky. Yes. So Amanda can help us with that. Things. It's a changing yes. <laughs> landscape from administration and so forth. So. Um, so I don't think we have any really new information here uh, regarding our assignments. Did I miss anything? Well, could solar, I guess is the Yeah, one. that's where I was gonna go. <laughs> could could somebody uh, give us a ballpark uh, with solar design associates, uh, for example? Uh, that has already done the first sketch of uh, what might mm -hmm. occur at the at the site yep. for, uh, for solar collection. Mm -hmm. Don't know. It might be no. It's just a, easily at hand. If, I think we all have the same questions: is how does the how are the finances going to work? Right, but I'm asking down the road. Imagining we had a uh, hundred percent plus capacity mm -hmm. on site to generate yep uh we have battery storage with that proviso and with battery storage what uh, would be the potential uh, annual savings a lot <laughs> yeah, but I, I think we could come up with something you know, with, i mean right with now a huge range of error because it's an estimate early yeah. on but that with that solar they're saying we save 110 okay say again without solar it's 110 estimated. Okay. Yeah, we did get updated information oh. from SMMA the other day. It's a little higher than what we had estimated by 100% or so, right? I had about 65. I thought you had like 54 in there. Or 60. So does that effectively anyway, change the 548? And I don't know. Not, not go into a separate row. Yeah, I. given the 548 is projecting so far out, yeah. I'd be hesitant to increase that savings number right now. I, I'm hopeful and expect we're going to be able to as we get closer and closer to a, a new building and actual budgets that correlate, but it seems it's all soft because it has to Certainly. be. Oh, yeah, it's all projection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. But the, the solar, if it covers, you know, another large amount, like, well, people do IROI calculations right. on every solar project that they do, even homeowners. Yep. Yes, they do. <laughs> Having been part of that, um, so I, I think because the FinCom wants us to vote that number, I think we should lean to the conservative side for now, in that a, a future school committee can continue to have this conversation. I think constantly. <laughs> about you know, where we're headed as we're proceeding with getting more information down the line. Um, but I, I think I would agree that um, you know, we just we need more information about the solar project, the timeline. Um, and you know, there's, there's so many variables, you know, the kilowatt costs being charged in five years from you know, Concord Municipal Light Plant. So um, you know, I hope that these all numbers all headed in the direction where the everybody will be saving a great deal of money. And I think that's the intention. Um, but I do think <clears throat> FinCom requested that we vote a number. I'm just not, the part I'm a little uncomfortable with is, you know, we're voting uh, a current school committee in, in 2021, a, a number that isn't going to be real until yeah. 2025. Yeah, we, we, can, we can vote to encourage. To or to uh, endorse a rec endorse an estimate, mm -hmm. uh, but we can't bind a future school committee. So no, not. no. Good try. <laughs> so, um, 
maybe I would look for a motion to endorse the estimate of 548,000 savings that we hope to be recouped in the first full year of operation of the, I don't know. I'm not sure either. I don't, I, I don't know that we can vote on this. I mean, how are we voting on something that... It, <laughs> Well, I think we're, we're simply voting on a number we want them to use, not a number that a school committee has to pay attention to. That's it's exactly it. The building committee. Right. Uh, you're just playing around with language. The words. Um, right. Uh, the school committee uh, could, could vote to uh, uh, reaffirm the 2018 estimate mm -hmm. of uh, operational savings. Uh, in the neighborhood of $548,000 annually mm -hmm. uh, when the new building uh, replaces the two current facilities. Okay. We're just saying we still like the number. We gave yeah. them the number once, we're giving them a number again. That's yeah. all we're doing. That's all we can do. Yep. Is we can give them any number we want, but it's yep. a number that is simply an estimate that doesn't... Uh, uh, bind a future school committee. Oh, no. No. And it was used at town meeting, so. Yeah. As a number. So then what, how would we word it? The Concord School Committee uh, reaffirms the, correct me if I'm wrong, 2018. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Estimated, right. estimated yeah. operational savings for a new Concord Middle School 19. Uh, as compared to the operating costs. 2019. Uh, it was 2019? Okay. So, uh, Prag okay. So but pragmatically, what is that doing? It's just you know, reaffirming what we said at town meeting. We're saying, we're saying use that think number. about it. Yeah. We used it at town meeting as a fact. No. So I think we, we have to. It was an estimate, right? Yes. But as, yes. Um, We're still saying that word. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, or we're not, we're not going to put it on the slide for town meeting, I guess. We already did. So we kind of, we're com kind of committed to it. <clears throat> and, I mean, there, and, there's always words we use around numbers in town meeting to say this is our best. Yes. Best, yeah. Our best estimate. Best estimate. Plan, yeah. You know, whatever. But. And right now, I think it's. I agree with the spirit of it fully what we're doing in the same way you know it reminds me of like when we asked to memorialize kind of the way we you know all the things that we included for example in the teacher's contract so that future school committees would have robust context right. as they embark on their duties in their whatever fiscal year so I feel like the spirit of those things are the same. And I, and I like that. I just, I don't. <laughs> Her hand up whenever that. Oh, happens. sorry. Well, I think we should finish our discussion yeah, and then, yes. Yeah. Like, so, so again, I fully endorse the spirit of it. I just, why are we, what are we voting? I, I just. We're endorsing the number that we gave at town meeting as an estimate two years ago the school committee did. But if it's already what been that given, that's already been endorsed. So this, we're just continuing the same number. Well, I don't even think the school committee ever voted it. It was just presented as part of our presentation. I don't think they had this kind of a discussion, honestly, but I could go back and try. Uh, we, we did. Yeah. Okay. No, we, 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 but did you vote on anything? Right. The discussion I think is appropriate. They went to town meeting. Right. Uh, there are parties uh, in town that would very much like this uh, number to increase. Uh, yeah. We don't have that information at the present time. No. I think we would like it to increase, but, yes. uh, but it would not be wise to do it absent any supporting information. Yes. Uh, can we be optimistic? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can we yeah. provide assurances? Uh, not yet. No. So uh, and we think I just I again, I love the spirit of it. And I don't know if I'm too in the weeds with word choice or, you know, semantics, but 
I just have to wrap my head around more the idea of what it's accomplishing other than a reminder, you know, would it well, be- I think it's showing our commitment. It says we, we remain yeah. committed and we, and we haven't been able to move on it right. beyond the 548. Yeah. Another possible approach is to vote to direct the chair to uh, 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 correspond with town officials uh, to the extent that uh, we believe the uh, 2019 estimate continue, uh, remains a sound one, period. Did I just, as chair, give them that, that we agree that it's a sound estimate? Yeah. Okay, well, the Syncom did ask us to vote, making, so we're, we're declining to vote. Yeah, and that'd, right. be a, that'd be a way to approach it as well. Okay. So I think we can communicate it without voting on it. I, don't, I, I just don't see the necessity of actually taking a vote when it's information that... Well, if it's included, for example, in our presentation at the special town meeting, I think that we should have voted on it. Because it's a key sweetener to that presentation. So I, that's just my two cents. I'm so. not. I'm not hesitant to to vote. Uh, does it does it bind us? No. We can only do what we can do with no. this new facility. We're going right. to squeeze out every possible efficiency. Exactly. And I hope it is higher. And uh, you know, somebody may well say that our estimate of 2019 was a promise for. 2025, and we'll have to say, uh, no, it was uh, our best estimate. And we hope to do better. I, 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 don't, I don't think we want to make this more complex than it has to be. No. I do hear your concern, mm -hmm. but I don't think this takes us anywhere we, we aren't already now, yep. really. Yes. You're, but I get, you're putting a new date on it. You, yes. We're putting a new date on it. And who has who asked us to vote on it? FinCom. FinCom. They voted... To ask us to vote. They voted to ask us to vote, but yes, we did. don't have to take a vote on that. Well, we could take a covered. vote. We could take a vote. I think it would be very appropriate for us to do so if they expressly asked us, which yep. they did. Yes, they did. I'm just going to say I'm not completely comfortable with taking a vote on it. Well, if somebody makes a motion. Oh, so, anyway. Um, we could go back and I can just assure them that it's the same thing as taking a vote. If I go to tell them that the committee endorses the 548 without taking a vote, I just don't know really what the difference is. Like no one doesn't, I, again, I endorse it. It's, you know, the numbers came from a lot of research that again was done with the best of everyone's ability to predict that kind of thing. So again, I fully endorse the spirit of it. I just... I don't know. Um, they're expecting that the same, they're looking for a, a savings list. So they're looking at this as a savings. So that in 2025, when the building comes online, they expect to see at least a 548 reduction in our budget. Now, it, Just as long as we all remember, other things are going to have gone up by then because you'll still have salary. Right. I think that's thing. where my I get you really worried. Show the reduction. I'm just wanting to be. There's going to be a lot of moving parts. That's all. Yeah. yeah. But yes, we understand. We need to be able to show that. Right. Which I totally. I mean, I fully support that. But I'm just. It's just. I'm just questioning. Why do we have to vote on it? I, I mean, I think we're going to find that money, but. It's just a number that's been set there, and and I think we can communicate it without. Well, about. let's let's channel the FinCom. Uh, I, Christine is right here, of course. Um, she can speak for herself. Uh, my interpretation is they want to show the town that they've done their due diligence mm -hmm. to look for every offset possible, uh, and for our part, we yep. had our administration bring us this number. Uh, that we trusted in 2019, and they're telling us, in effect, you can continue to trust it. And we don't have any substantive information to change that number for better or worse. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I don't so, disagree uh, I don't, with that. I don't, I don't think we should make this difficult. No. Um, because I think to uh, predicate uh, a resubmission of that number based on, quote, no new information. Okay. Yep. Uh, is not uh, a, a very big big leap for us, very small step for us. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and I think to 
not do it is riskier than to do it. Yeah, no, no, no. I get and I get that. I get I guess. Let's talk about the words. <laughs> Maybe um, like what the, uh, the specifics of the motion or the how you're going to say it. I move that the Concord School Committee uh, direct uh, the school committee chair to communicate with the Concord Finance Committee to the effect that the 2019 estimated operational savings of $548,000 uh, continues to be a sound estimate based on available information. Okay. I'll need a second. Yeah, I can second. I have a second. You officially second? Oh, oh yes. I thought you said you seconded it. No, I can't. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, I can second that. Okay. Further discussion. I'm definitely more comfortable with the wording of that than to just be taking a vote to take a vote. I mean, okay. it, it's really just, we're voting on you communicating back to the FinCom. Yep. And, and I'm much more comfortable with that. Right. But it's going to be on a spreadsheet that the school committee has endorsed this. So I just like, it's sort of, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't okay. think anyone, of course, we wouldn't endorse okay. it. It's based yeah. on sound estimates. All right. Okay. Any further discussion? And Erin will record that motion as <laughs> stated it. Sorry, Erin. <laughs> yes, I have it. <laughs> oh, wow. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay. You ready I to take can, a vote? Yeah. I, yes. oh, oh, we don't have to roll call. No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We pass with our or person group, and let's just see. Uh, I'll take citizen comment at the end of the meeting. Let me just see what else do we have to do. I've lost my agenda once I think again. We're done because we're not going to do. Uh, we're not going to do the capital, capital plan. plan. Yeah. Yet, although we're nearly ready, but yeah, I just would like to get give throw a heads up. Um, okay, uh, I'll take citizen comment at the end if there's any. Your hand out still. Who does? I don't I lost my Zoom meeting. Christine has an open mic. Okay, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to comment that I, I think, Cynthia, that, that the discussion with Mary was around the way that we realized the 548, right? So what we had proposed to you a couple of meetings ago was that we would adjust the guideline. So what I thought that was the main purpose of our, of our discussion was we were trying to make sure that we could explain to the town how it was that the 548 would be realized. So your, your discussion is helpful. It's good to have the school committee reinforce it, but it was also this issue of how do we get it? How do we achieve it? And I, and I think what Mary had put forward at this meeting a couple of weeks ago was a, um, an adjustment to the guideline. And that's, I think, what we were after. In 2025, though. In, in, yes, in, 20, in the year, yes, in the year that the school becomes operational. I have, yeah, I have a feeling that the, the appetite to, it's just so hard to make that kind of a commitment to a future school committee. So I think, I appreciate the, the thinking um, and honestly, I hope that it's going to be a much bigger saving and adjustment to the guideline. Okay. So, so yep. It, I mean, so uh, that's fine. That's fine. So that's what FinCom voted. So again, you know, FinCom will change the same way the school committee will change. Exactly. But our recommend, you know, our recommendation is going to be, it comes off the guideline. Yeah. And let's have, you know, that should certainly come up at the, uh, the hearing for sure, you know. That's what you all discussed, and I think just to be yeah. honest, <laughs> but that's not what we voted tonight, obviously. So, yeah, but I think that would have okay. been a much more difficult thing for us to get through, honestly. Trying to and adjust we'll, a guideline for and we'll know a lot more in 2025, and we we'll know more. more in 2023, I hope, you know. So, you know, that it's, it's going to be a journey, that's for sure. Um, and I It'll be an interesting and fun journey, um, but you know, each each year I think we'll have different and nuanced discussions about this. So, um, yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank right. you. 
Have a good Thank night. You. All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in yeah. favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Yes. Jared, thank you again. Yes, Jared. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.